What's up, guys? How are y'all? Got a whole bunch of people already jumped on. I appreciate y'all jumping on tonight. So this is going to be a little different than what we normally do. Normally, our, our Wednesday chats, we do this every Wednesday night. And we call it Tech Talk. And kind of what we, we thought about when we started doing this is we have a time where we could just talk about, you know, my racing program and give people ideas. There's always a lot of comments on videos. And I get to, I, I try to answer as many as I can and I uh, get a ton of emails and, you know, I get, occasionally I'll go to my Facebook, uh, my Facebook and I get tons of messages from people that are not my friends. So they're in that spam folder. And so I miss a lot of questions. I try to help everybody as much as I can. So I thought this would be a good outlet to do our Wednesday night tech talks. And we usually have a great time uh, every Wednesday night, about nine 30 or so. We jump on and we just talk about racing. Usually my crew guys get on here and we use this platform StreamYard and uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, I can have people on. We can have up to like nine or ten people on at a time. So people show us around their car. And it's fun, man. It's just a, it's a gearheads. Uh, it's just it's just fun. We have a good time. So let me see if I can catch up on some of these comments fast. I appreciate y'all already jumping on. Uh, we'll try to stay on the night. About an hour, hour and a half um, is what we normally do. And sometimes it's... 11:30 when we get off of here and, and you know but you know how it is when i every time i tell kelly i'm going to the shop when i'm going over to uh, brian's shop to work on the race car i'm like i'm only gonna be there about 30 minutes and th that's a lie and that's the same way this is you know we get to talking um about race car stuff and you know what we're doing and you know what everybody else is doing and man we have a good time this this is fun uh, Turbo Jaden, um, Daniel, appreciate everybody jumping on. Boost is my friend. And you'll see some of these people, um, the the cast that jump on here with us, they'll have the the little the little TJ or the uh, the little uh, custom uh, thing beside their name, Richie. And uh, those are the people that are normally on uh, our, our Wednesday nights. And uh, what we also do is we have a, um, a another complete email address. And then that way I can 100% get to all, all the questions. And I'm not an expert. I don't claim to be an expert. I'm an expert at nothing. And, you know, we just got some, some racing experience. And uh, we do, since, since I'm on a budget, I mean, you know, budget makes you do kind of some things. Sometimes you, you know is probably not the best. And sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it end up, ends up uh, costing twice as much money. Uh, so, you know, some of those things that, I, you know, I like to share, um, one of the, the best things I can share with, uh, you know, that experience is people that are, are going blow through carburetor. I was blow through carburetor forever. And, oh, there's Kelly. Kelly just come up. Hello. She's going to try to moderate, uh, help some of the, the comments in case we get a bunch of comments. And that's the thing too, like our normal Wednesday night tech talks, um, you know, we're able to keep up in the comments over here for the most part. And, um, and we just have a blast, but sometimes when it's live like this, I, I miss a bunch of, of comments. Yeah, it gets a little overwhelming. Yeah, but I appreciate everybody jumping on. And, um, but what was I saying? Oh, blow through carburetors. Um, I was blowing through the carburetor forever. And um, I know there's still a bunch of fast people out there with those fuel leakers. And uh, Bill, Bill, Billy the Kid's one of those. And, and Bill, they got that thing figured out and it works great. But it uh, it works fine. There's Kelly. Everybody. She's over here beside me. Of course, off. And, look, and we're and we're in her area. Can you tell? Um, my garage downstairs is like a, just a little two car garage. The race car currently does not even fit in there because we have all sorts of other projects in there. So I'm in her office space tonight. This my is, craft studio the, for my YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, the craft studio for her YouTube channel is where I, I do this. Although occasionally I've got like some of my like my uh, my, my belt and my chain, some of my trophies. Are kinda, here, you want me to no, it's okay. load you up? And it's funny. We will put them back here in the back, and then she'll go on her live, and everybody's like, "Why do you have a wrestling belt?" <laughs> I'm like, "It's not a rest." I say wrestling. Wrestling. Rest, wrestling. North Carolina. Accent. Wrestling. It is what it is. Billy and Bill's been picking on me a bunch about my, my southern accent. But um, one of the, the things that I like to share, for common, common, common question is, uh, like with blow-through carburetors, you know, the fuel system is something that I tried to skimp on when I first started doing this. And, you know, I'll have people, they'll be like, you know, can I get by with a Holly pump? And I've tried it, and it won't work. And so that's instantly my, my first my first thing is, you know, you got to have a better fuel pump. And so some of those things, you know, some things I have not tried to be super budget on and I've spent more money on, but, you know, the, the stuff that is budget is freaking, 
you know, you want to do it as a budget. You got to make your, your money go as far as you can within reason. I mean, there have been times where I have, I have built stuff and, and I've done stuff and, you know, and then at the same time, it's like, Oh my God, this is not going to, not going to work. Um, so I just missed a whole bunch of questions. Okay. Let's see. Okay. No, and I'm not set up yet. And Kelly, we were running kind of late. She was down there. Um, I was doing my nails. She, man, but those things rock as a back scratcher. That's why I was about late. She, <laughs> <laughs> I said a back Here's scratcher. Here's the ones I haven't, haven't, haven't uh, filed yet. <laughs> Not a face scratcher? Come on. You're trying to... The, the back scratcher, she's like, I just done my nails, and they're like really sharp on the end. Oh, my God. They, they feel good. I mean, luckily, I mean, she didn't, you know, bear no down hard. What's up, guys? But, yeah, so, we, man, we have a fun. Um, we have a good We have a good time. Um, Happy's on, and uh, Mil Happy. there's Milton. Um Milton. Milton, are you going to hop on? I sent y'all the link. And yeah. So, and so that's why we, we usually have, um, I shoot, sometimes we'll have six of us on here. And if any of the, um, usually it's uh, me, Randy, uh, they must be doing Tequila Wednesday or something again. <laughs> they might be a little late. Margarita. <laughs> Margarita Wednesday. There you go. Um, but uh, we usually have a, a, as many, a lot of my crew guys with me on here. And, uh, you know, but sometimes they pop in late. Sometimes they don't pop in. It kind of depends on what they got going on. And then if anybody wants to jump on and show us around their garage, if they're working on anything and, you know, they got a question or they just want to say, hey, look, man, you know, here it is. This is what I'm working on. We always we do that, too. So that's that's always really fun. Um, Sammy Tompkins hopped on from TKM. Um, Sammy, you got any rods for Randy's motor? <laughs> we, we're waiting on connecting rods we, we, um, on Randy's. Uh, and, you know, it's at the uh, at the putting GRPs in another, a little bit better rod as far as like a width and a, a sizing and, you know, custom stuff, man. I mean, you know, when you, when you got one off stuff, it just takes a little while. And um, so hopefully we're going to have connecting rods for Randy's motor uh, and have his motor back together for Woostock in. I think Woostock is in two weeks, maybe three weeks. It's two, two weeks or three weeks. I pop the comment oh, okay. Oh, there's Andrew. I forgot. I keep forgetting you can do that. Up yeah, Andrew, what's up? We're outside of Raleigh, um, so we're in between Raleigh, Raleigh and Clayton. Uh, so uh, yeah, we're racing. Man, I'm still tired. We have I, I can't be as tired as Billy and um, Street Racing Channel and all those other cats from you know traveling all from up north and all around. North Carolina is really a, a hotbed for racing. I mean, as y'all seen, I mean, if, if you live close by. I mean, you understand. I mean, we can race every single weekend, and there's usually really, really, really good races. And I, that's what we've been doing. The last, that's the reason I put this the, my, the motor back in my car is because we were, uh, I mean, there was a lot of money available in one month period of time. I got a little teeny bit of that, but I didn't get as much as I had hoped I was going to get. But, you know, we, we were racing. We had fun. Every, I mean, four weekends in a row we raced, and it was it was good. The car this past weekend, uh, you know, we, we were in a little bit of a slump. We had two races in a row. We went to Union and, and went out first round. We, we pulled uh, Jolene. And then the, uh, last weekend we were at uh, Wilkesboro, and we pulled Lyle with beer money. And so, you know, those are those guys, there's a lot of bears out here, man. There's a lot of people that are super, super fast. And so – it is what it is. That's right. <laughs> See, that was perfect timing. Did you do that on purpose? Yes. <laughs> it is what it is. She read my mind. She knew I was about to say it. And Milton is the one that um, we got our T-shirt coming out. He's the one. Uh, apparently, I say it more than than I I know. Uh, it's just, a, I guess, a line filler for me when I'm when I'm talking. Is uh, it is what it is, but. Um, it is. It really is. It is what it is. And I had a couple people were like, that's the stupidest saying ever. And I was like, well, it kind of is stupid, but it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's funny. Um, but yeah, I cracked myself up. So, but yeah, so, uh, we've had a lot of racing, a lot of bears out there and like Friday night at union, we done good. We got down to four cars when we were at the, the first race in Darlington, uh, with Corey Stamper. So that was fun. We had a good time. Um, we got so that was amazing. I uh, had to race Bobby Parks. Bobby Parks put me out. Then we went the next weekend to Union. Union, we were able to test on Friday night, and so we made a lot of passes Friday night. I bet I made probably four or five passes. Um, and car run good. It run really well. And then we pulled Jolene uh, Saturday, and I put in it what I thought it would it would take to go down. 
and it went down and then I had to grab a scramble and he, he just put the, the gap train on me. It was bad. He, he put a, a pretty big gap on me. And so uh, we got out there and, you know, but I felt like I had a good weekend of racing because I got, I mean, I was racing. I'm in the car, you know, and I think most racers, uh, you know, they understand the people that race. We do this because we like that adrenaline rush of strapping in and going down, making some passes and, you know, being behind the wheel is, you know, what, what we do this for. I mean, we do all the other stuff because we like it too. I mean, the, the working on the car, but being in the car in the driver's seat is, you know, what we, we mostly do this for is that feel, that rush of getting the car down the track. And it don't matter to me if I'm by myself, if, you know, I'm, I'm doing a test and tune. I used to be test and tune king. And, uh, you know, and that's just, that's just the way it is. It's just you're making passes. Making passes is what's fun. Trying to figure out how to make the car faster. And so I felt like I got my money's worth when I first round. And, you know, but I was like, oh, yeah, we had a blast. And then we traveled up to Wiltsboro the next weekend. And it was off the trailer with no testing on Friday. And off the trailer racing, I kind of struggle with because, uh, you know, I don't have a lot of data and a lot of information on a lot of these surfaces. And uh, so, it, you know, it's one of those things that was, it was tough when we were there. We had a great time. I mean, we had really a, a fun time. But, you know, we showed up, you know, Friday night. We drove down there, uh, got out um, Saturday morning. And, uh, you know, we went off the trailer and drew beer money, knew he was going to be fast. And, uh, and we went out first round and I mean, you know, it's all, I mean, still had a blast, like I said, but I mean, it just kind of sucks, you know, go out first round and, um, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Look, there's, there's Brandon and Milton. Hello. What's up? Hello. How are y'all? Dinner. Good. How about you? I yeah, am good. Just... Milton, you, you don't cut all your hair off. <laughs> oh, <laughs> your hair. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Thank you. Milton's going to. Uh, Milton, do what, Brandon? I think you shaved too. Yeah, I got a. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, cut for I got a smaller <laughs> head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, 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 going to. Um, he's going to Georgia. Did you say you're leaving tonight? Oh uh, yeah, I'm gonna get a little bit of sleep, and I'm leaving around two o'clock. Oh my goodness! Wow. They're they're going. He's going to uh, what? Sweet sixteen this weekend. Yeah. So that's gonna be a blast. And they're 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 racing locally here this weekend too. They've got uh, two races this weekend. Um, Thunder, Thunder Valley. Valley's got a twenty eight by ten race, and the King of two five two. Or no, it's the not the King. It's the Throwdown. Uh, throwdown. There you go. Two five two Throwdown at Kinston. And so, but we're we're not racing this weekend with my car. We're going to uh, we're actually going to Ohio to go visit uh, Kelly's family. Uh, we haven't seen them in a little while. Sorry, no, that is fine. the only reason I'm going to Georgia. <laughs> we well, that's what I mean. You know, it's, See, it's, everybody gets a weekend off because I don't want to go visit my parents. <laughs> it's it's spring break, so you know Chase is out of school, so it's gonna it's gonna work out good, so that we can. My camera is screwing up. There you go. Um, it's going to work out good. We're going to go up there and visit family. We hadn't seen we hadn't seen them in a, a little while. Over a year. Yeah. So you know the COVID stuff has kind of been kind of been rough, and so we're going to go up there and visit them for the weekend. Come back like Monday or Tuesday, and then I'm going to um, tuck my new torque converter in the car. Um, hopefully on Tuesday, and we're going racing next weekend. Roxboro has got a race next weekend. And I have an announcement. I'm going to let John race on my birthday. <laughs> Just in case there's any question, because every year <laughs> he wants to race my birthday, he has to give me half his prize money, and then he always loses. He always loses when he promises me that. But this year, we're just going to let him race. Well, and, and, and the bad thing is, it's not going to be me racing, though. I know, so there's Randy racing. There's, there's, there's going to be no <laughs> you prize. You just outed left. me. I was just going to be like, I'm only doing it for Randy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that, is, that is actually Woostock weekend. Um, is, is Kelly's birthday weekend. And so we were talking about it yesterday, and uh, she was like, "That's my birthday." <laughs> I'm like, "Sorry." And that's that's all. That's always my 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 deal with Kelly and Chase. If we're racing somewhere and it's their birthday, I'm like, "Whatever we win, you get half of it." If we go race on your birthday, if you don't, you know, if you don't mm -hmm. gripe and complain. Um, <laughs> Oh, was, is that part of the rule? Well, I she, didn't know that was part of the rule. Well, she doesn't gripe and complain anyway. It's just, I mean, it just. Racing is all encompassing. It takes so yeah, much time. I mean, it really does. It takes so much time and effort. And, you know, it really, I mean, you know, everybody that's around you that don't really care much about racing, they give up a lot. So I really appreciate that. You're awesome. You got a bunch of questions if you want to start answering okay. them. Okay. Sorry. Well, I'm still, I'm still catching up. I know. I'm just letting you know that questions are piling up. Okay. 
Um, so yeah, so we'll, we'll start rolling through. And that's what, this is normally what we do is we'll spend the first 15 or 20 minutes kind of talking about like our race and stuff, what happened with us. And then we'll pop into the questions and, you know, I get a lot of um, you know, questions that come to the email and, uh, and we, we just try to, you know, answer them the best I can. And some of it, I mean, honestly, the truth of it is, is that, like I said, I'm not a professional anything, uh, you know, so I'm just a, a redneck backwoods, um, you know, racer. That has a little bit of experience on some of this stuff and so i like to share that but you know what's cool about this group is like if you don't know or don't have experience or something usually someone else on the group does and they share what they know so it's like a big collective piece of knowledge no that's right that's exactly right it's we, not always you with the answer on wednesday night. no that's right and that's what we try to do i mean there's a lot of people on here that you know have have more experience and you know they got some some better stuff than than what we've done look there's randy randy popped on randy hey randy Randy, you're muted. Randy, you're muted. We can't I'm hear you. Mute, I'm mute. Good What's Lord, up? you better be glad, Milton. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Randy, did you nice just hear, You just hopped on. Did you hear Thank Kelly? You. I gave you a gift, Randy. Hey, oh, she, yeah. She said that we can go racing on her birthday at Woodstock. Oh, wow. With no uh, bus, no bus. Nice. She said that you have to give her half the wing. I did well. not say that. That's your <laughs> deal, not Randy's deal. That's fine. That's <laughs> Randy's like, we ain't going to win nothing no way. <laughs> Randy, Randy's like, can we also make that if you blow my shit up, I, you got to help me fix it. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. No, that that is that is funny, funny. But yeah, I appreciate you jumping on. But yeah, so <laughs> then, we went to, um, so we had fun at Wilkesboro. Lyle banged our teeth in. Um, so I got outpowered at Union, and so I had way too soft a tune-up in it. And so I knew Lyle was going to be swinging it, and I know Lyle's got uh, traction control. And I knew we were on a bad surface, and I was like, Kyle, Lyle's going to swing at it, and he's going to go fast. He ain't going to miss the tune 100%, but the traction control is going to help him get down if it does try to. And so I, I put a tune-up in it. Um, you know, luckily, you know, Billy was there, and Billy and his dad gave me some good advice on, you know, what they thought the, the track was going to do. And those cats, man, they are they are dead on on what they are so good at looking at that surface and figuring out what they need to do and what the track will take. And they pretty much called it dead on. And I put in it exactly what I thought it needed, but. I didn't do it exactly right. And so mine struck the tire like 50 foot, got wheel speed, and then Lyle zinged it down through there. And so we got put out first round. Still had a blast, though. Always awesome, you know, hanging out the track. I mean, you're at the track. You can't be – even when you go out first round, you know, it, it's it's not that bad when you're at the track. The thing that struggles, though, I mean, these entry fees are getting high. I mean, you know, $300, $400, $500 entry fee. Um, that's That gets expensive every weekend, especially if you're not getting into money. And you know, there's some, there's some, there's some big money to win out there, but there's some killers out there. Patches, um, you know, Bobby Parks, uh, uh, Lyle. I mean, you know, Jolene. There's, there's some hitters out there. Willie really Dynamite. You got to be on your game. You got to be fast. And these cats are. I mean, they're, they're killing it, man. This no prep stuff is taking off. There, there's racing. Hey, hey, it seems like all the time. Hey, 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 there's, hey, there's hey, hey, how are you? I haven't seen you forever. I know it's been forever. We need to get together. Definitely. Did y'all go, go have tequila margaritas? Yes. Did you? Dude, we need to go over there and do that. Margarita Wednesday. That's, exactly, that's what we need to do. We need to do it. We need to make a trip down there one, yeah, one Wednesday. Margarita Wednesday. Wednesday. This is what Mar we need to do right here. Margarita Wednesday. I like it. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. Mute button on. No. <laughs> But yeah, it dude, we had a fun and a digger dive was this weekend. Um, you know, we we that video it ended up being three days long. I did, I, did, I was like, okay, I, when I first did it, it was like an hour long. I was like, okay, I can't you can't do an hour video. Nobody's gonna watch it all the way through. And so that's the reason I broke it down into those three days. We got a lot of. I think we had a lot of good content. Though. I mean, going rounds. I mean, that's how y'all can tell if I done good or not. If 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 we go to a big race on the weekend and there's like a one little eight minute video then probably we went out first round <laughs> if we if it's like round one round two round three then we might have got lucky and made it some rounds and dude i was i was nervous as all get out and i mean and all my crew guys understand i mean we're constantly we're like i mean 
they have more faith in in the car and the setup than I do about 100 percent of the time. And, and, you know, it's just it's just crazy. I mean, I just have no faith. And, I'm you know, I just I'm like, OK, we're going to miss it again and it's going to spin. And then we go out there and it makes a decent lick. And then we start looking at the data and we start talking and, you know, we, uh, we're iPhone YouTubers. So um, everybody has an iPhone almost except for um, Anthony. He doesn't have an iPhone. And so we, um, we we get all the data, we look at it, and we, we kind of talk about it, see what the car done, and then we make a decision on, you know, what to do. And, and a lot of times it works out, and sometimes it doesn't. But we made it down to four cars. There was 117 cars. And we've been struggling all year, and, you know, with the, the dough prep stuff. The car is really fast at the front of the track stuff where there's some rubber on the track. But the, the back of the track stuff, the real true no prep, where it's real coarse, it's real, it's really uh, a, a rough surface. We've been struggling. We didn't, we haven't been able to go as fast as I thought we could there. And uh, one of the problems is a torque converter. Uh, I talked to Dusty uh, last year. And he's like, man, you got to take that torque converter out and send it off to us or buy another one, something with a less aggressive stator. And, you know, I mean that, okay, well, I want to race front of the track. I want to race back of the track. I want to race semi prep. And so I'm like, okay, so I'm going to just try to, to wing it through. And it's made it's made it through for the most part. But now it is uh, definitely showing that I've got to do something different. And so that's why, um, you know, earlier in the week, I was, well, actually it was Sunday morning. Sunday morning we woke up. We went to bed at – it was – Milton, what time did we get in bed? It was about 3.30? It, it was 3.30. Um, Randy drove home. Brandon drove home. And uh, it was about 3.30 when we got in bed. It was freaking, it was late. And so got up at 7.30, 8 o'clock, finished packing everything up. And uh, one of my other buddies, Clint, stopped by, and he was on the way out too. And we were talking, and, you know, he was sharing a little bit of data um, on uh, what he thought some of the cars were running 60 foot-wise. And I knew what mine run, and I was like, okay, converter's changing. It's coming out. And so I got <laughs> home, and, you know, I started trying to figure out what I was going to do with converter. Um, luckily they did want to split the pot a little bit. So I got a little bit of cash. It was a very minute. Yeah, that was kind of about a uh, little bit of cash. And I get it. I understand it's a winner take all race. Um, you know, the promoter does not, uh, say, okay, we're paying back four spots. We're paying back 10 spots. Or he says we got $35,000 purse. The winner gets it all. Now, if y'all want to split it, then, then fine. And some of these big hitters, man, you know, they, they are splitting, which is good. So, you know, at least they're giving the, the racers that are slower, an opportunity to get a little bit of money, um, you know, for the slower back of the pack guys or mid pack guys that happen to make it through. And I really appreciate that. But I'm, the, I'm a, uh, I'm going to make me a shirt called uh, Sir Splits a lot. Uh, that's gonna be <laughs> one of our, uh, one of our things. Cause I'm all about splitting it and split. So the, I, I firmly believe it's about the race for me. It's not about the money. The money is 100% good. And if I could make money to help, my program, that's awesome. But, you know, there's a lot of people that have really fast cars and they have a uh, they have a, a higher percentage chance of winning, you know, a lot of money. And so those cats don't want to, you know, split quite as deep. So until they start taking some losses, you know, they'll probably still have that same mentality. And I don't know that I, I don't know that I blame them. And, you know, it's, it, so it's one of those things I'm going to try to do my part and hand some of those faster cars some losses so that we can get, you know, some wins. Those but in order to do that, we got to get faster. I've lost to a bunch of fast cars, so we're we're working on it. Um, the new car, um, I actually went over last night to Brian's and worked on it for a little while. I got one bar in, one freaking bar. I was over there for three hours, one bar, one one, and it's a little bar. It's only about four. it was on one of the little support bars. It was, I mean, it was it's crazy. So, but we're working on it. Um, you know, it's coming though. We had a great time. Dig or die. Never disappoints. Um, I paid my lock in money for dig or die yesterday. Two hundred dollar lock in. You got to pay the other three hundred at the track. July is going to be. They're hoping to have a hundred thousand dollar race. Um, they're going to have two hundred cars with uh, five hundred dollar buying in a piece. Hundred thousand dollars. That's a huge purse. I hope those cats won't be split it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, because I don't know that I'm going to be fast enough to win it at that at that time. But we're going to be trying. But I hope they want to do a little bit deeper split than what they did last time. That's a lot of money. I mean, that's that a be lot the new of money. car. Do I? Will that be the new car problem? Uh, it depends. Uh, I mean, the the old car is it, it keeps uh, showing me it doesn't want to retire. Honestly, 
I mean, you know, I mean, that's, I mean, that's the reality. I mean, you know, the car is, I mean, you know, we, we, we went two first round losses in a row and then we went from 117 cars down to, to, to four. I mean, that's, that's just freaking crazy to me. The car and the car is reacting and, and, you know, I've been slow motion, all the other racers, patches, Kendall, um, Bobby, I'm looking at everything they're doing. Um, uh, I, I, I mean, the beater bomb. Y'all saw him this weekend with the butt hurt bar, you know, the and the the eighteen inches of front suspension travel. And, and so I'm looking at everything. I'm trying to take what I think from everybody, what everybody is doing, and trying to make ours faster. And um, Turbo Man 351, um, will you be selling brown fox? I don't think so. Oh, there was just another question up there. What happened to it? It's about the cookies. Oh, cookies. Well, I, I just was about what you're talking about. Uh, so oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, the cookies. cookies too. SRK they were great. It was awesome. They were the bomb. They were really good. And that's something I didn't even notice until I was editing the video. Uh, somebody pointed out they were like, you were like, put the cookies in the golf cart in case you rate the cookies are safe. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even, I didn't, honestly, I didn't even realize I said that when I was, I mean, yeah. when I was talking the about The cookies were more important. The, the cookies were safe. It was salty saying but the cookies. Yeah, the, the, the true um, definition of a fat man talking about the cookies. Protect the cookies. <laughs> <laughs> They yeah. were good. They were really good. They were, they were really, really good. So, yeah. So, man, we had a good time. Dig or die. It's exhausting, though. I'm still, like, tired today. I mean, it's, like, Wednesday, and I'm like, ugh. And that's why I was struggling and working on the car last night a little bit. That might have been why it took me three hours to put one bar in is because I was just, you know, struggling. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's just uh, it's just crazy. Yeah, I mean, hopefully – I'm sure it'll get split some. Um, you know, it, it's just one of those things. They, they you know, $100,000 purse. Uh, the split we ended up going with, which it was a decent split. It was uh, not as deep as I would have liked it, but it wasn't bad. Uh, we had $35,000, 20000 to the winner, uh, first th- uh, 10000 to runner up, and then uh, the third and fourth place, we got 2500 bucks a piece, which I had, I, I, I honestly had brought up splitting that eight cars just to get entry feedback for the, for the uh, fifth through eighth. And, um, you know, nobody was really interested in that. So the guy was racing CB Gilbert. We made a little side deal so that the, the the loser would get their entry feedback. So I won twenty five hundred bucks, and then uh, Sunday he had already cut out, so I paid out him three hundred bucks for his entry. So he got to race for free. And sometimes that's you know that's 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 what I'm talking about. For for me, it's not about it's it's about trying to win the money, yes, but it's more about winning the race. And if I could race for free, if they, if they had these races for free and they were giving me a, a little two dollar trophy, I'd probably still be out there racing. I mean, you know, and that's what some people do, that's just not what they're going to do. I mean, no prep is dangerous, it's skid, but I mean, that's what we used to do back in the day before the purses got big. I mean, you drag race because you know you like racing, not necessarily because you expect to win the money. The the winning the money is just a, a side bonus, um, honestly. Uh, Adam, with the with the new car be lighter than the old one? That's a very good question. Um, the goal was for it to be a uh, a very gutted out, clapped out, just gutted race car. Uh, the more bars I put in it, it's probably going to end up probably being about the same weight by the time I'm done with it. Um, maybe just a tad lighter, but uh, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. So w- we will see. The goal is um, there goes uh, Southern Chaos. What's up? What's up, man? How are you? Good seeing you. This this cat he's got a YouTube channel as well. Um, y'all make sure y'all go check his channel out. They're racing down in Florida. We met them when we were uh, down there at Cletus's race. I had a blast down there. Appreciate you jumping on too, Glenn. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to catch up on some some questions. Let me start at the top. Yeah. Well, I'm going. I'm going through now. Um, let's see. Yeah. Thank y'all. I appreciate y'all um, giving me some props for Digger Die. Can't do it without my crew, man. We we really. We really have a good time. It's, it's, it's fun. It's exciting. Um, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, we, we picked up some, some some of our crew people from our YouTube channel. And, I mean, that's why, you know, Brandon and and, and Milton, um, Anthony, I mean, you know, they started, they saw some of our channels. They saw some, uh, Brandon or uh, Milton and Randy um, a little earlier. But, I, I mean, I, I didn't never know them. And they started coming to the track, hanging out. Wanting to help on the race car and man, we I mean now you know we're we're good friends. They come to the track all the time. We have a we have a blast. And you know, it's something that there's always stuff to do at the racetrack. It's it's amazing how what all has to happen. And um, you know, it's just it's just it's just crazy. It is so fun though. It's it's fun. Sammy, I appreciate it. John does the most with with the least. I, I definitely um I I I I put I I guess. I, 
<laughs> I try to I try to be as as frugal as I can, and that's what you know. Uh, you know, the budget racing is hard though as you get faster and faster and faster, and that's I think that's one reason that I am really, really, really loving this no prep stuff. Um, it, uh, it is. Yeah, Lee, that's actually funny you should say that. So Milton uh, pointed out that I say that a lot, and we do. We got <laughs> and so um, that was at Darlington. He was giving me a hard time. He's like, "Man, you are constantly saying this is what it is." And so it was at Darlington, and he brought it up. And then when we were on the way to seventeen that next day, when we got to seventeen, I was like, "We need to do a T-shirt." And so Kelly was like, "I think you're right." And so that's how we got. We just took a picture. All my crew wasn't there. I hate that all my crew wasn't there. But only me and Randy were uh, and, and Milton were there, and so she just took a picture and all the stuff that we've exploded on the car from you know and the race losses. So that, that's pretty funny. I but, might be able to pull up a picture of it in a minute. Yeah, but we 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 do have it. They um we we actually got the the final uh, drawing done, and um, they sent it to us. It's going to be on a gray shirt, and so it looked like they, they wanted to not put gray in it because it was gray and it looked like I had on no pants. And so, <laughs> so Kelly was like, Kelly was like, that's not gonna work. <laughs> and so they're having to add some some colors to it, so it looks like I ain't naked. Um, but I guess that would be funny. <laughs> Where's yeah. your pants? So that, that, that that's funny. But um, Carl Siemens, that's one of my buddies. He's um, he's working on some cars too. Yeah, he's always on a budget too. He's always doing you know more with less as well. He's trying to run up there with Randy and. He's trying to do this small block boost stuff. Um, I, I, you know, luckily with you know, I got a my pro cool. mod Carl. Pro <laughs> mod Carl, they, look at Carl. Did you hear him call you pro mod? Oh my Bunch god, of my ass. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hear that later. <laughs> but Carl, come down there. Look, do y'all remember though, uh, Randy? Last year when we done our first no prep race at 17, mm -hmm. um, I showed awesome. up. I had, I had no idea what I was doing. I was stalking Billy the Kid's channel. Everybody that was no prep, Beater Bomb. I was on 1320 video looking at Beater Bomb. I mean, I was just stalking everybody, trying to figure out how to make this thing work. And we got there, and I was like, I have no idea if it's going to work. But we rode around the pits and the cars, man. This is no, I mean, not a dig on anybody because there are some really nice cars in no prep. But most of the no prep cars, a lot of them have dents and dings. They don't have fancy paint jobs. You know, the panels are mismatched because, you know, you scrub the wall a lot. You work on making it fast. Look, there's a there's a shirt. It looks like I ain't got on no pants. <laughs> <laughs> really great legs. But that is that's the that is the shirt. So that is available still for pre order. But we're gonna have some. We're ordering some also. Um, oh yeah, they're gonna be available in the shop and at the track. And uh, members had a, a fifteen percent off discount code. I think that code might have expired. But if you are a member, a channel member, and you did not get to use your discount code. If you email us at the mem we won't say it out loud, but the members email, you guys know what it is. I can send you a code for 15% off if you want to go ahead and pre-order a shirt if you miss that opportunity. Because members get discounts when we put out products and occasionally we'll have sales and stuff like that. But yeah, it's um it's crazy though. I mean we we have we have a great time. That's a that's a cool looking shirt though. I thought it was interesting. She done a good job on the the artwork on it, you know, making it. Which I didn't draw it, but I got it drawn. Yeah, she got the picture. I'm not that talented. She got the picture and did like the tweaks on it, and then they did it. So man, it, it was fun though. Um, where was that before we got on sidetracked on the cookie? Oh, my first day or die experience. Um, I don't know who was with me on the golf cart, but we were riding around. I was like, this is my peeps. I was like, this is where I belong. I was like, I belong in the no prep world. I mean, when I see the cars, you know, the front ends are half of them. I mean, a couple of them didn't even have front ends, no hoods. I mean, you know, it's just, it is, it is crazy. The, you know, the stuff you see, the weights hanging off the back. I mean, I was like, these are my peeps. These are the guys that, um, you know, I, I enjoy, I got a good deal. I got a sweet deal. We can go, um, we take my car to the no prep stuff now. We take Randy's car to the, to the fast stuff. Um, and so Randy's got a really sweet car. It's really fast. And, you know, no pants. It is what it is. That's right. <laughs> no pants. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's, it's funny. Um, Chevy triple nickel 55. Um, John have 88 uh, Fox body. Uh, one kid having a little trouble hooking. I get an 80 to 100 foot out. If it's on no prep and it's 80 to 100 foot out, um, either your converter's grabbing too hard. That's what's happening to mine. Uh, so you need to either put some uh, timing retard in it. I mean, you could it could be some suspension issues out there if the front end 
is uh, starting to settle too fast, but it also depends on what type of surface you're on. If it's on a uh, if it's on a prep or a semi prep track, mine was kind of doing the same thing. And uh, when I sent my strange uh, double adjustable struts off, and I had them revalved for the pro mod uh, or the mod the pro mod version or mod radial valve and whatever they call it, the um, it made it come up slower and it actually kept it hooked up longer and it made me through it because I was struggling. The car would take off and it would get about 60 or 80 feet out and then it would knock the tires off. And what was happening, and even with the extension full tight on those strange double adjustables, it was still coming up too fast and then it would start coming down. And so being able to slow that down. And then, so then there, there's my exact problem. I done that and then we went, tried to get more no prep, no prep. And then I had to put a regular set of strange 10 ways on it. Something that would, excuse me, flare up a little bit faster because even on full loose on extension, it wouldn't come up fast enough. So it's just, it's just crazy. Um, Freddie, yes, those cookies were the bomb. They were really, really, really good. Um, Rodney, he's one of our uh, members that is on our channel every week also. Um, he saw your wreck. Uh, Sammy, he also was in a pretty horrific crash uh, not too long ago. Um, he sent us the, his in-car video stuff. That stuff is scary. Um, I cannot imagine what Sammy went through, you know, to no prep down there. Uh, luckily, he survived. Uh, the spectators survived. Cars destroyed, but I'm sure they're going to be building another one. Uh, I mean, racing, you know, and there was a lot of people, you know, talking smack about, you know, the, the well, it's a no prep, it's a wreck. I mean, you know, it, it, what do you expect in no prep? I mean, people wreck every day in bracket racing. They wreck, they wreck in radial racing. They there's crashes happening in drag racing all the time. And, you know, crashing is part of it. We can only hope that when we do crash, our safety stuff, you know, protects us. And that is one thing that, you know, I used to be real lax on. I mean, I would show up and I'd have on a helmet. I honestly remember making passes in flip-flops probably 10, 15 years ago. And, I mean, like like legit, like go to the track, I have on flip-flops, a T-shirt, and shorts. And I have on my helmet, and I go make a pass. Now, granted, it wasn't super fast, but, I mean, it was still, when you run, you know, 6.0s, 6.50s, I mean, at 115, 120 mile an hour, you crash, you want to have some protection. And so now, you know, I've, I've, I've gotten a little, as I get older, you know, that seems, seems to happen. You know, you get more aware of, okay, well, this is a very dangerous sport, and you, you, you want the car to save your life. You know, you, want, you build it, and you hope that if you crash it, that the car – and your safety stuff is going to going to give its life to protect yours, and you know so that's what what I do now. I mean, I you know even I mean we were at Digger Dive this past weekend, you know t-shirts and shorts. I mean is the is kind of the norm, and you know and I'm over here. I got my fire gloves on, my 15 layer pants, and I don't have a 15 jacket yet, but I need one. Honestly, I want one, and um, I got a dash five, and I've got on my 20 gloves and my Hans device, and I just ordered a new helmet. My helmet not my helmet that I had was a SA-2005, uh, so it was a little out of date. It was a little bit beat up. I just ordered a – it was a Typhoon, I think it was. Um, Anthony had had posted a link, and it was uh, it was cheap, and it was a SA-2020, and so uh, we got that. But, I mean, safety is a lot of – that's the – you know, you got to – it's your responsibility, though. You know, if I'm racing somebody that's over there with a, with a, uh, a brain bucket helmet on, you know, from a, a motorcycle – I mean, you know, that's their deal, in my opinion. You know, the, this, uh, what is their their worth, um, you know, that they see for themselves. So, you know, it's just one of those things. I mean, it's just uh, I try to do, be as, as safe as I can. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things. Um, Sammy said he was pretty sore, um, you know, from, from his crash. But um, I just tried to click on that. And somehow I clicked on a thank you. That That, that is something that definitely uh, interests us. Um, so somebody... <laughs> Somebody, uh, let me see. Let me scoot back up real fast. Um, I lost some of the earlier questions. Yeah, I don't know. Some sometimes if the comments pop by, um, it'll it'll kick it'll kick through. Okay, here's your very first question. I pulled it up over here on YouTube. If okay. you want to read, that's the very first question someone asked. Okay, um, it's from 19, uh, 1968 red Camaro. My 7AL3 just took a dump. The launch control isn't working. What it needs to show go with grid or Holly. So um, it depends. Uh, if you want to stay carbureted, obviously the grid, the power grid, the black box and the red box together, or you can get them both black. Um, that combination is is that is the gateway drug to, to Holly EFI. 
And that's exactly what I call it. The gateway we're, drug. Yes, it's, it's the gateway drug to EFI. And um, cause and you were on a programmable ignition, but the, the power grid can do so much. It's really good. And once you figure out the power grid and you're halfway decent with it, then making the leap to a full EFI is not a problem. So, uh, it, you know, if the funds are there and you've got funds and you don't, I mean, you're going to spend... 750 800 bucks on a power grid setup it depends on your motor uh you can get the plug and play like the the, the holly hp kits with the, the computer all the wiring and everything for like less than two thousand dollars then you got to do your fuel system you got to do you know intake with an elbow and a throttle body but efi i love efi efi is i was die hard blow through carburetor forever and then I, I lucked up and got EFI because somebody had, had switched to EFI and um, it, he was disgusted with it. He was having a problem. And, you know, because it's, it's, it's kind of overwhelming to start with. And especially this was about five years ago. So there wasn't a lot of people sharing information on the Holly. And, uh, you know, so he was like, I'm done. And so I sent him a message. I was like, I will. He was like, I'm going back carbureted blow through. And I sent him a message and we basically did an even swap. I sent him all my carburetor electronics and he sent me all the Holly. And that's how I got on the Holly bandwagon. And um, my buddy Shannon had already uh, switched over to Holly EFI and Brian had already switched over to Holly EFI. And so I was like the third one in line and they had already made that mostly, mostly the jump. And, um, you know, and, and we're working on it and showing that, okay, it could be done by us old carburetor dummies, you know, so that was one of the things that uh, it was, it, I'm, glad, I'm glad. I like Holly EFI. So Holly EFI if, is definitely my preferred. Now, I've never used any other type of EFI. So, I mean, fuel tech may be okay. I mean, you know, big stuff three may be okay. Fast, they're probably all similar, but Holly is the only one I'm familiar with. And so that's why, you know, I usually recommend people to go to Holly. And then also, you know, you got to also think about uh, track support. If you're at a track and you're racing and you're having an issue, then, you know, you got to have, I mean, you got to, what do most people use around you? If, if you're at a track where most people use Big Stuff 3, then I'd probably get Big Stuff 3. And then that way you can get some help. Prime example of that this weekend, uh, we got to the track on Friday and, and Tyler, um, Tyler No Boost, he was pitted beside us and he just got a car and he was having some problems um, with the tune. It just wasn't, it wasn't, it was just kept popping, lean popping. He's got Holly EFI went over there and within an hour and a half or so we had it to where it was raceable. Uh, it's not perfect, but I was able to help him, you know, get it so that it was, it was better. And, you know, he's going to have to still go put it on the dyno and do, do a bunch of crazy stuff to it probably. But, uh, you know, it's got to be some fine tuning. But that was a, a good example of, okay, well, somebody at the track knew how to do it. So that's what I would probably do. Um, there was a, a question about uh, some dump valves. I do not have a dump valve on mine. Well, I kind of do have a dump valve on it, but it's not a real dump valve. I have a Holly, or not a Holly. I have a, uh, look, I'm, I'm a Holly salesman. I need a Holly hat. I need a Holly shirt. I mean, geez. Um, I have a, uh, a nitrous fuel solenoid on, on mine. So it doesn't flow a lot, but it does actually help it spool up a little bit. Um, and I had thought about, you know, trying to put a regular big dump solenoid on it and see if I could make it hit the, hit the tire a little bit less. Uh, but when I was talking to Dusty, you know, PTC, he, he specs a lot of PTC. He said, you'll probably see a little bit of a difference, but I mean, my graph, when it takes off, the RPM jumps up to 51, 5200, and then it lugs right there. And that's where the converter starts taking off. On a, on a true, on a prep track or a no prep from the front, excuse me, uh, the car runs right through it. That PTC 16.0 has been flawless. It has worked great. And so that's the reason I didn't want to really mess with it. So I'm going to put it over to the side. And this new huge converter is going to be uh, my no prep. And, um, you know, they got some, they got a lot of good experience. So we're going to try the, uh, the huge converter on all the no prep stuff that is true no prep. And then, um, you know, I, they got dump valves as well. So I'm going to talk with them when I get the converter and see if I need to do the dump valves as well. Uh, and, and see, I know Billy and all them. And then, you know, when I started looking at it, I mean, Hughes has got all, all my, almost all the, the super fast no prep guys. That's what they're running now. So Eric Manns hooked me up with that. Um, he sent me a message. There's a couple other people sent me messages. And uh, Eric Manns is a dealer. And so he was like, man, he was like, he's like, he's like, let me get you in the I promise you it'll be faster. 
And so um, if y'all need one, hit, hit, hit Eric up. I mean, it seems like it's going to be okay. Um, scramble button. Uh, well, we ain't run it yet. I assume it's going to be. Um, but we're going to try next weekend. Um, scramble button can add more boost. Um, that's that's exactly right, Rodney. That's what I call it, the old the old poop button. Um, and that's why you can. And I've got it up there on the on the dash. And I'm getting I'm getting. I used to just swat at it and then get back on the wheel. But I'm getting to where now. I'll, and this is something from Billy and Bill. You know, Bill's like you know, hit it and then let off. Hit it and let off. And mine's one of the switches where you can it just goes on. So I physically have to go up there and pull it and push it. But and it makes sense if you think about it. So the new car maybe I may do it a little bit different. But um, you know, I pulse it, and so is I'm over here driving. switch or the um, the windshield wipers. I don't know. It's, it's the, the top hazard switch. <laughs> yeah. hazard. The hazard. It's the hazard. It's the hazard. That's right. Yeah. It's a. <laughs> I mean, that's like you can hear it when it gets on it. But that's what I'll get over there and I'll hit it and I'll bump it and pull it on and on. And then I'm like, oh, it takes it, and then you just leave it on and then you go. And that's the, I had never honestly, I have never even thought about doing it that way. And that just gradually gets on the ramp, so it doesn't hit it all at one time. Um, so I mean, that's awesome. That's why we were kind of joking the other day. I mean, soon we're going to have a, um, a steering wheel with about 10 different switches. You got scramble one, you got scramble two, you got scramble three, you got boost decrease, you got parachute. I mean, you're going to have, I mean, hopefully you hit the right one, you know, hopefully you don't hit the, the one that is, uh, descramble. <laughs> descramble. <laughs> Milton, somebody asked, uh, Anthony asked, you've got a ride. What kind of car you got? What you got going on with yours? Um, I got an 88 Coupe LX. Um, right now it's going to be a 447, 18 degree headed, small block Chevrolet. Um, it's going to be naturally aspirated for now. Um, still trying to decide whether I want to put nitrous on it <laughs> or, <laughs> or go turbo. Um, Pro charge. I, <laughs> 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 you got a <laughs> um, <laughs> Pro Charger might be a little rough on me. Milton has seen Milton has seen the drama with Pro Charger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Milton's car, yours is you said the motors are gonna get dynoed what in a couple weeks or next month or so? This week. Waiting on headers. Well, this week they're gonna download it and the headers are being made. So we'll have his car at the track soon, hopefully. Getting we'll show you some data of it. Um Freaking uh, Zach, his car, he's fixing to go deployed. So um, when he gets back, his car will be done, hopefully soon. So at the end of this year, he'll be good. Brandon's looking at some cars. Um, we'll have a whole bunch of cars, I mean, at different different things. Um, Little John, I called him today uh, to see, you know, what was going on with his, see if he wanted to go to the track tomorrow night. But um, he's got an aluminum fuel cell. And we, we all have aluminum fuel cells. And but for some reason I don't know if maybe it was from the Q16, but his fuel cell corroded. Mm. He said that he went to crank the car and like three or four injectors were stuck, and so oh, no. the, the methanol has killed the aluminum fuel cell, and that's just crazy. I mean, because we hadn't had that happen to any of ours, and so he ordered him a plastic fuel cell to be in. I think he said Friday or Saturday. Um, so hopefully, I mean, his is going to be super fast. I mean, Little John's is going to be a rocket. Uh, Randy's is going to be, I mean, when it comes back out, we're going to get some. I'm we're selling going to get mine some. to Sammy and Eric. That's what I'm going to do. Do what? I'm selling mine to Sammy and Eric. You've been selling that car since I met you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Ain't nobody dumb enough to buy. The, um, we, uh, we, we're going to, we're going to solicit the help of Kevin Mullins on, uh, tuning it, um, this time for sure. I've seen him all the tune stuff that I've got. And I mean, the reality is, is Randy's motor's making an, probably 27 to 3,000 horsepower. Um, at the weight it's running the mile per hour, we got it to run. And, you know, the, the other thing that he's got the, the MSD 600 box on, it's a really hot spark. And, you know, and I don't know if that's – I've never this, – this is my first one ever tuning. We we did have one cylinder, number cylinder number five, it melted a, the plug strap. And so that's usually bad. That's the reason we pulled that motor apart is when we want to look at it. The bearing was squashed out a little bit, but it wasn't terrible. But the interior rods um, on cylinder, on hole number two, three, five, and six, three of those rods, when Sammy got them laying out, they were tweaked. They were bent. And so I don't know if that was an overfueling issue. Now, we didn't ever burn any holes on that one. The plugs always look good um, in those holes. So I don't know exactly what the deal was with that, but they're putting a thicker rod in, a solid rod, 
with none of the lightning stuff on it and uh, a rod that's a little bit wider. And uh, they've seen that happen before, but, you know, I mean, at, at 3,000 horsepower, uh, all it takes is a very minute uh, problem, and then you got a big problem. So uh, we're going we're gonna to hopefully get it on the hub dyno, and then Kevin's going to be at the track, hopefully, with us, um, you know, when we first get that thing going. Once we get a good baseline solid tune on it, you know, I, I can I can tweak the boost cur curve stuff, and I can do the minor fuel correction. And I mean, we read plugs all the time, but I mean, I just want I want a I want a set of eyes uh, looking at the data and looking at it of people that I mean, Kevin and them they tune three thousand horsepower cars every week, you know, so they they just got more experience doing it. So I think that's that would be silly not to to uh, ask for their help when they're willing to give it. <clears throat> um, so Freddie asked, he's one of our normal guys too. He actually is local to us. Um, they they come to the track and hang out sometimes. Uh, what intake and head should me and Cleve be looking forward to switch the direct injection? Um, EFI small block Chevy. Uh, man, I these profiler heads are the bomb. I, I mean, I'm loving these profiler heads. I've got profiler uh, two tens, they're out of the box, and this thing is a I mean, my motor is very basic. I mean, y'all seen if y'all go and follow the channel any at all, it has uh, I mean, it's 364 cubic inches. Those heads are out of the box. I have not ported them at all. Uh, Richard did have to do a, a valve job on them when I screwed them up and um, broke a valve. Uh, but that was, there again, that was my fault because I put used valves in my new heads um, trying to be on a budget. <laughs> I mean, it, it worked for a little while. But um, so, uh, but those heads are awesome, man. And it, I mean, that, my car, it legit weighs 3,300 3, pounds. And at 40, 40, 45 pounds of boost, it will run 160 miles per hour in, in the eight. And, and it does it, I mean, pretty, you know, I mean, it does it pretty consistently when we're on a, a really good track, which that's hard on parts. So that's why I try not to go on really good tracks because that up button, as you know, they say HED, um, those cats, where'd Milton go? He just dropped off. He might be going to bed. I don't know if he, yeah, he didn't even tell us good night. He didn't even say, hey, guys, I got to go. He'll be back. That's how, that's how some of our crew does that. You look around, you're like, where'd they go? Where's he at? <laughs> he might have lost the signal, too, though. Um, but, yeah, small block Chevys and Fox, man, it's just cheaper to build a small block Chevrolet generally. Uh, Ford Ford costs has come down a lot. Um, but, you know, it's just it's just one of those things. Yeah. He said he didn't want to interrupt. Yeah, you, you could have. He's, yeah, he's got to go. He's got to go to bed. He's going. He's going to take a nap. Um, he's going to Sweet Sixteen. Yeah, he says he's leaving at two o'clock. He says, wow. Yeah, he's leaving early. But um, yeah, it's it's uh it's definitely interesting. Um, we are not going to be racing this weekend. Um, the uh we're going to be visiting some family. Uh, so we're we're not going to be going anywhere. Uh, uh, Randy might show up at a track somewhere, but I don't know where he, where he's going to go. I'm going to Kinston, 252. You're going to go to Kinston? Yeah, my son uh, is going to meet me there. So, Oh, nice. I'm really, I'm really just going there to, you know, check things out, but hang out with a kid. Right. And Carl said, somebody asked about dunk valves earlier, you know, his his advice on that. Um, he thinks it's just a, a Band-Aid for the converter. And the, the pulse width modulation definitely can help, um, you know, on, on the, the dunk valves. Randy's car has... Um, is, yours has got an internal dump valve, and it's got. He went to Milton went to go get some cookies. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, Kelly actually just ate the last one last I night. Did. Yeah, yeah. It, she she ate the last one last night. I was saving it for John, but he was kind and said I could have it. Well, you were so kind to go to the track with me, and you you're allowing us to race on your birthday. So <laughs> you know that then. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we have to you have to butter up ahead of time. See? But I know how to do this. Not really. No, I didn't. I <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm trying to catch all the questions from members first. But, okay. Um, yep. Um, yeah, let's see. Here's um, one from. Okay. Oh, yes. Um, he's one of our members, uh, Miles. Uh, do I think no prep? Yes, yes, yes. No prep racing is, I think, it's, it's taken off. It, I think next year, this year is going to be huge. But next year is going to be even more huge. I mean, it, class racing is, uh, I mean, you know, a lot of people are realizing the caliber of the car you have to have to do any type of class racing. And there's a lot of people that just don't have that budget. And, you know, and 
the no prep, you can legit, you can compete with a car that is, you could, for $20,000, you could build a car and you could have a competitive no prep car. It takes laps to get it in and get it going, but you can do it. And so it is one of the things that, you know, for $20,000, I mean, you can't do any type of class car that way. I mean, you know, even the, like the 235 series, the surface is so good when you go class racing, the, you know, that you just have to have, you just have to have really, really good parts. I would highly suggest going to finding some of the no prep races and just going and hanging out and watching. And now it's a little sketchier. I mean, you know, it's, you know, it's a little, I mean, I was, I was radio racing and, you know, I would, I remember, I, I would say about every week, I won't ever put slicks on my stuff again. <laughs> you hear me say it all the time. I will never put slicks. I will never put slicks because I tried slicks one time and it was all washy and radials. If you feel anything in the car, if it, if it moves with a radial, you're done. You just let it off. But with a slick, it kind of moves and chaches a little bit and that's kind of normal. And I remember watching Billy the Kid and, you know, him whipping it down through there and kind of side side to side. And I was like, I was like, he's crazy. He has lost his mind not letting off. And, um, you know, and as you get more used to it, you can kind of, you know, I haven't I haven't crashed mine yet. And I, I mean, I don't I mean, I'm, I, it'll probably happen at some point. At some point, it's going to I'm going to push it a little too far. And, you know, hopefully, like I said, it won't be back crash. But I mean, but it moves a little bit. And so you're in there filling the car, you're putting in input gently on the steering wheel, and you know, you're barely moving it, kind of moving it slow and letting the car kind of kind of do its thing. And um, and that's just the normal feel. And now that I've been doing it for a little while again, I'm back to my pre-radial what I used to remember when I used to race a long time ago. The cars kind of move a little bit on the slicks. But you know, if you're on a good pass, they don't move as bad. So I mean, you know, clearly, I mean, you know, a slick can be you know, sh- straight. There's so, some people I mean, out there doing pretty good on radios with no prep. I'm surprised. Yeah, there's a couple of people that are able to do it. I mean, it's you know, it it is insane. It's crazy, Freddie. My um my intake that I have on mine is RHS. I've got an RHS um, and it's not uh I mean it's not it's not being ported or anything either. Um, I mean I like the I like the RHS. Um, uh, I mean but I think any good intake. The good thing with boost, when you're doing boost, it is definitely, um, you know, it, it does not have to have a super high dollar set of heads or a super high dollar uh, intake, and it's, it can still be very successful. So, I mean, you know, get get what you can f- afford. You know, look, look, and you don't want to get one of the small, small, super small runners, but any of those things, any of them can work. But send me a message, too. if you And if you have any questions, I mean, you know, just shoot me an email and, and I'll look at it and see what I think on it. Um, what's the best way for us to know the schedule of no prep races we're hitting? Uh, so uh, Jack Stan racers, um, where have, do you have that updated pretty good now? Well, it's hard to keep up with the schedule, but I need everyone's help to do that. Let me share my. Screen. So we created a website. When did we create it? Like two a year ago? Two no, years ago? No, not even. It was just before Christmas. It was, oh, was it? I think it was right before, it before my that. surgery oh. or after my surgery. Okay. So it was like in the fall. Okay, so it was in the fall. Okay. Oh, oh, that was the other. Okay, the other one we were, we were thinking about doing. The, um, but she just created. We created another website. It's called Jack Stan Racers. Okay, it's on the screen. Now. Okay, JackStanRacers.com. Um, and so what she's trying to do is um, just make it so that you can. The events are more even. Uh, it's easy to see. It's easy to say, okay, well, where's a race at this week? Um, there's also some Facebook groups out there that have, you know, a lot of local racing. Um, the, go ahead. So, so jacksonracers.com, what, we, what we, we're trying to do with this is create a place where everybody can create a free racer profile. Or, oh, hi, you can you can go here and create a free racer profile or there's like paid if you want to like add videos and stuff like that but everybody can create a free profile but you can also go and add um events all over the country and i think you probably can put it all over the world you can add events and so i'm trying to go through and when i see events when i have time add them here but you guys can add events for free too so i'm hoping that it'll eventually get to a point where everybody's helping me um, put the different racing events into the calendar on this website and it can become a nice place where we can, you can look up and you can look by radius from your house. You can search the map by radius from your house to see what 
areas around or if you're going to be traveling you can look for where you're going and see if there's races around you and stuff like that but it's, still, it's, it's okay. in the beginning stages so we, just, we need more people to be entering the free events and stuff like that so that's a great place if you have a couple minutes i want to go help me enter some events that would be awesome and um one on facebook that we go to local in the carolinas um chef and parker created a group it's called carolinas small tire drag racing connection He's also got a good good calendar of events where uh, people are racing. But I mean, this no prep racing, man, they're legit like racing every 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 single weekend. There is racing available of some sort, um, especially locally here, um, out in the Midwest. I mean, those guys are killing it. You know, I mean, you know, Street Outlaws has been huge. Uh, it, I mean, it really, you know, they do a lot of the like the real street stuff. I'm not doing the real street stuff. Um, I'm going to do the back of the track and the front of the track. It's just on the street, in my opinion, is just too risky. Um, you know, it's, it's a high risk sport anyway. So I don't want any extra unnecessary risk. I mean, with other cars coming or, you know, ditches on the side of the road. I mean, you know, there's just a lot of risk. And not to mention it's illegal. So, I mean, if you get caught, I mean, you might catch the, the cop that says, okay, man, I like drag racing. So y'all just get out of here. But it would be my luck. I would catch the one that goes, oh, we're going to make an example out of you, and you're going to jail, and we're going to crush your car. That would be a terrible YouTube video of watching my car getting crushed Ooh. because I was street racing. So, so yeah. So, um, it'd be crazy. Here's another one of our, our members, uh, Boosted Lucio Racing. He's got a, a YouTube channel as well, so make sure y'all go follow him. Um, he's down in Texas. He's, he's from North Carolina, and uh, he used to be up here, but now he's uh, down there racing, killing it down, down south. And, um, you know, he's got a boosted Camaro. We're boosted, li I mean, boosted lifestyle. I mean, that's what, you know, that's what it is. I mean, we're everything, almost everything we have is boosted. So, I mean, it's just crazy. Um, let's see. Um, Al had a question. Are you going to double up on your plate on your four-link brackets? Or is the car tracking better from the front end? Uh, so, the current car, uh, the, the oblong holes on the uh, lower brackets, those are brackets that my buddy Fox Rider, Jason Rigney, um, he got me probably three or four years ago and I, I should have, I guess I should have got some doublers and I didn't. Uh, and that's why they're kind of all jacked up now, but, um, we are going to, uh, I'm uh, doing the no prep stuff. It doesn't pull on them that hard. So they're probably fine. Uh, but if I, it, I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I might try, I don't, I might try to get up with him and see if he's got any doublers. If he doesn't, then I'll probably just order a set of, uh, new blower brackets and put on it. If we continue to try to, uh, run this car. Uh, so, I mean, it's just, it's just one of those things. Um, let's see. Let's see. Somebody asked about Randy's car. Yeah. Rand Randy, uh, we gave a little bit of a date. What's, is your car, what have you, did you talk to Kevin yet? Sammy was on here a few minutes ago. I don't know yeah. if he's still on here. No, he, um, he told me two weeks ago that the rods would be, he said, they said two more weeks and tomorrow is, uh, Two weeks, and I'm telling you, it was everything I could do not to call them today. <laughs> you gonna pick them up tomorrow? <laughs> no. Well, they gotta balance. It. I know they're not in because he would have called. Yeah, and that's uh, as, as, and that's just how it is when you're waiting on parts. You know, I mean, yeah. well, I mean, we're waiting. We're just waiting on parts. I mean, you're. I mean, when you order a set of rods or you order a set of pistons, I mean, there's a whole bunch of people in front of you. So I mean, your order comes in and it's in line. And so when, when they get to you, I mean, they're, they're moving as fast as I can because I can promise you, you know, they want to um, definitely. Um, I was know, right there when he ordered them. I was, it was on the phone, but it's been 13 weeks. Right. They said, they said six to eight weeks. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, you know, I, I mean, it sucks that they got bent. I'm glad Sammy found them that they were bent. Oh, so, absolutely. They yeah. could have been so much worse and. No, that's right. And that's it's all you know, good. It, it, We're I mean, just so lucky. It just sucks. We are. Just, We're lucky. The whole thing just sucks. I'll take some uh I'll take some luck anytime. <laughs> that's right. Um Jonathan asks, uh, will we be at Coastal Plains any this year with a new car or old car? Uh Coastal Plains has actually got a race uh next Sunday. Uh it's from the front of the track. It is not a no prep, it's a like a, a prep race. We may go go to that possibly. Um it kind of depends on how how it's going with Randy's. Our goal is to make um, next weekend is the ninth and 10th. The following weekend after that is Woodstock. So um, 
We put the motor in on the in the trailer on the way down there. <laughs> right. Which luckily is like a zipper. I mean, we work on it. I mean, it's set up pretty well, so I mean, it's easy to work on. And um, so if we can, if we can get the, if Sammy and, and Kevin can get the rods in and get it, get the assembly balanced and stuff. I mean, we're going to try to make Randy's. So we probably won't be racing that Saturday and Sunday. One of those days we'll be working on, um, you know, Randy's race car, trying to trying to get it going. Hopefully, that's our that's our plan anyway. Um, Peter said, was cheering y'all. No more first round duck. I appreciate it. <laughs> I was so excited to just make it past first round again. That was the first um, round's the most important round. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. I want to make him a first round duck t-shirt. Yeah, that's another shirt we're going to do. First round duck. First round duck. It's going to have my car going out. <laughs> have it. Go I know, there you go. Perfect. Have it. Had to backing up and spin the entire smoke. <laughs> first round duck. <laughs> this is what happens. I was going to have a have a duck bill and a tail. Oh, well, I see. You said, see, our, we have to collaborate on our, exactly what we're going to do. Um, let's see. Let me see if I can. Um, so I did have a question also. Um, let's see. Um, Rodney had a question. Uh, he's just now recently switching over to uh, Holly EFI. And so he is, uh, let's see what his question is. He's, he's, he's in the, the process of setting everything up. So he's setting up a boost curve. Um, if I'm time burst a couple seconds past what you're trying to run. So let me I'm gonna um I'm gonna show y'all. Let me get I'm trying to say six pass. So um three second curve. Okay, so one of his biggest questions he has, let me show you. Uh, real fast. Let me let me pull up my Holly EFI real quick, and then I'm gonna share my screen so y'all can y'all can see it. Uh, let's see here. So let me go to share screen real fast. Okay, where should I share share share? Are you gonna defend your king in the track at Rico? Yes. Whenever that is, I need to find out when that is. Brian McNair, when, do you know when it is? <clears throat> okay. So y'all should be able to see my screen now. I'm going to take down the comment. Okay. So here's the, the basic uh, boost controller. So this is the Holly. Now, there again, I am not a Holly guru. Uh, Devin Vanderhoof is honestly probably one of the best Holly tuners out there. And he has a YouTube channel as well. So most of the stuff that, that I do, I watch his stuff all the time. When he puts out a video, I mean, just go watch it. Because he is, uh, he is a, I mean, he, he is really smart. He wires cars for a living. So he's good about the wiring and figuring out the, the, the minute details that a lot of people miss. But he's also good about setting up these advanced tables. These advanced tables right here, Holly can do a ton with. And uh, so he's a real smart dude. So go follow his channel, go watch his videos, and a lot of this stuff, like setting up the advanced tables and doing different things, he can he he's got a video on it most likely. <clears throat> so setting up the the boost controller. So if you it depends on what type of boost controller, um, what type of setup you use. We're assuming you're going to use uh, Rodney. You're going to have dome control. So I'm going to just go through the basics too. So uh, yours is I know a lot of this. So like mine, I have the the regular old six JJ five two valves. If you've got that um, that new uh, Holly, that right there is awesome. So a lot of people are using that. It's got the, the boost increase and it's in the block, the boost increase and decrease all together. So um, I just use the dual Humphrey because that's what uh, I've had and that's what I use. It's just the, the part number on those valves is 6JJ52. You can get those boost control solenoids for like 20, 25 bucks a piece. So um, don't pressure only, boost versus time. Uh, what this uh, TPS modulation is, basically, if that is unchecked, then what happens is as soon as you turn the ignition on, it follows your boost ramp. So whatever your boost ramp is, that's what it does. Um, and then when this is checked, you got to have a percent throttle to start it. So one of the problems with checking this box is if you're going down track and say you ease off the gas just a little bit, um, or for some reason your, your throttle cable stretches or your brake pedal loses some tension, or if you chicken foot it just a little bit, 
uh, from where it pulls you back in the in the, the seat real fast. If you go from 100% throttle to 90% throttle TPS, it drops dome pressure. So if I'm on a really sticky track, then I usually don't I usually don't do this. But for no prep, that's a good good idea because it, it kind of it lets you um, manipulate the boost curve. Um, so over here on the uh, the target launch, uh, this is off of your trans brake. So basically, you got your your target enabled here. This is when you're on the two step. That's how much dome pressure it's going to put on the top of the wastegate. So one of the things too that, to to make sure you're careful of is this does not necessarily dictate what boost pressure is going to be. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It depends on wastegate size. It depends on wastegate placement. It depends on, um, you know, what spring you got in the wastegate, if you got one at all. Um, boost scramble, this is the old crap button. Um, you know, this has got 5 PSI on it. You know, basically you hit it, it gives you 5 pounds of dome pressure, increases the boost, and, you know, you should make more power. Uh, Holly also has a, a, you know, a way to do just do, do a boost decrease here. So, I mean, you could, in theory, take this boost decrease, put it on the brake pedal, and if you're out there, and, uh, you know, you feel it start to do something crazy, tap the, the brake pedal and uh, it, it drops some dome pressure or you can put it on another button. Like I was saying, pretty soon we're going to have about six or seven buttons on the steering wheel. Uh, these are all just safeties down here. Um, 55 PSI boost pressure revert to wastegate. Woo, that's a lot of boost. Uh, but mine won't go that high. I was just getting it kind of out of the way. I've got some safeties building here too. They have cost me a couple races, so I don't even, I got that, you know, not even with that. So um, this is just your, uh, how to set up the dome control stuff. Um, they can see my screen. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Uh, so, you know, you just play with the PID terms. And we talked about that the other week. I'm not the best with this. Um, it kind of, you have to just play with it, though, to get it so that it follows the curve correctly. So one of the questions Rodney had, um, so this is boost curve. Um, you know, one of the things that's very important is what I always try to do is whatever my launch is here, if I'm on a track that is reasonable, that first number needs to be that number. So if that, if I was leaving on 10 PSI here, the first number right here would be 10 PSI. And then sometimes you might, you might not have a linear ramp like this. You might have it so that it's more, you know, you might have a, a ramp, something like this, and then gradually increasing. But you can move all this stuff. But one of the things, you've got 15 cells in here, right? So you can see these are spaced every four tenths of a second apart. And so when you're on like a track where you need a six second boost ramp, then you got to do six seconds. If you're on a track that is, uh, you know, faster then I would do, you want more resolution. So I do three seconds and then you go in and you highlight these with your left click and then you right click it and then you hit fill row values. And now you can see now I'm down to um, resolution of two tenths of a second. So that's a three second ramp. So if you're leaving on two and now you got 25 in at three seconds, if you wanted to, you know, make that linear, I mean, you just do it like this and now that's it. So that's, that's a pretty decent ramp. So one of the questions Rodney, Rodney had was, well, what happens at the end of this? So it maintains 25 from that point forward. So as long as the ignition power is on and um, that TPS modulation, if you got a TPS modulation on, after after three seconds from the trans brake release, it's going to be trying to maintain, um, or I'm sorry, if TPS modulation is off, it's going to be trying to maintain 25 PSI. And so it'll constantly go, and so it'll be keeping the pressure up there. And if you got a leak, then it'll be going a little bit faster, uh, trying to keep the modulation. So, um, you know, that's what it's going to do. So whatever this last number is in this cell here is the last. So, um, you know, that's why I did it. And if you've got a really fast ramp, then if you want really good um, resolution, then you can do it at 1.5 seconds. And now you can, you can just more control that ramp. So you can do it in a tenth of a second increments. Um, now, a way if you're on a really, really, really tight track, let me show you something that we have done. And the track's got to be pretty good to, to make this happen and, and to work. So we got a one and a half second ramp. Say we're going to 45 PSI. This is pretty freaking aggressive. So we go here, but if you will take this number, so we're leaving on 10, so say that makes eight pounds of dome pressure at 4,000 RPM, we're leaving at eight PSI. And if you take this number right here and then you jack it up to 15 and then start your ramp there, um, five or five or 10, I've, I've even been 10 numbers up. 
As soon as you let go to trans brake, it instantly puts more dome pressure. And I also have done this before where you go 20 and then you hold 20 for, say, a half a second. And then you start your ramp from there. So there's ways you can manipulate to make the turbo, you know, come on harder and faster. And so there, those are some things to do. But, um, you know, a lot of times I'll see a boost ramp and say they're leaving on 10 PSI here. And then they come up to their boost ramp here and the first number is say six. And so now what you're asking the Holly to do in this scenario is you're asking it, it was on eight PSI so now or 10. And now you're asking it to drop to six and then ramp it back up. And the Holly can do that, but that, that messes with your control. Got a couple specific okay. Things oh, uh, so, okay. Hold on a second. Let me look at that. So that is the way you do that. Um, okay. Um, Okay, um, Rodney said, don't show any secrets. <laughs> We're trying to concentrate on launch to 1.6 seconds and make the graph at seven seconds total. It bunches all the triangles toward the beginning of the graph. Yeah, that's what it's going to do when you have a real big, when you have a big number out here at the end. So that's what it does. And so so what happens is, that's what I like to do. I don't, I don't ever do it, but... Like Devin and them, a lot of times what they'll do, basically each one of these dots is in this period of time right here, Rodney. So that 8.6. So when this is linear, so this is 1.5. Hold on. When this is 1.5, the triangle is at 0.8 seconds. That makes it easy to see what it is, right? But when you put the number out here at 6 seconds, now basically what you've done, your ramp is the same, but... The, what, what's happening is it just it can't line up the same because now you've got all this resolution in there. If you want to make it so you can make it, I mean, linear again, if you left click it and drag it and then uh, fill row values, now you see it gets back on that graph again. But what a lot of people do is what they'll do is they'll do, okay, so they'll say, um, so good instance will be a four, let's, let's go, not four, point five, let's say, Let's put that back on 45. So what you can do here is say if you do a uh, 4.5 second ramp, and I always like to do it based on increments so that you can, uh, it makes it easier for me to see. So now I've got it back at 4.5. And what you can do though, say if you wanted a three second ramp to 45, you would go in here and the first thing I would do is put 45 up there and then, you know, Fill these. I, I, the reason I like linear ramps is it's repeatable. And by what I mean by repeatable is I can go look at my data log. Now you can save every run, you know, every data, every global file you got. But the problem is, is you'll end up having a whole bunch of them. And then if you have a global file from January and then a global file from July, the boost ramp may be the same. But if you've run the car for six months, your fuel table is going to be different. You may be different timing table now. And then you just change the, the global file and then you forget about all that stuff. Now, now it's suddenly, you know, 40 degrees higher temperature in the middle of the day. So instead of, you know, racing at 50 degree weather, now it's 95 degrees, you know, the car is going to behave different. So, and I've done that before. You load a tune that has an old fuel file in it and then the car runs like butt. So you have to be careful. So what I try to do is when I, I find a run and I can't show you all, all my data logs, but what I do is all my data logs, I label. So when I make a pass, I download it, I hit save as, and then when I hit save as, I put the date, where I was at, and what the ET was. And what, you know, then, you know, in the Holly, you can actually, you know, put the run, you can put notes. Um, it's awesome what you can pull up with, with the data stuff. And it's, it's just crazy. It's insane what you can pull up and how it can store it. And so then what I can do is I can go grab the data log and I can say, oh, okay, I left at 3,400 RPMs. I had six second, I had six pounds of dome pressure and I had a 2.5 second ramp. And then I can duplicate it. Whereas if you start, I mean, if these are down just a little bit and, you know, one pound of boost makes a difference. So that 33.3 right there, if it's at 32 or 31, that's going to be a difference. And so that data, that, that curve right there is going to be harder to duplicate, you know, mm -hmm. later. And so that's the reason I like to do linear stuff. A lot of people don't do it this way, I understand. And there's a lot of different ways, you know, to do it. But that's just, for me, that's what I like to do. 
So uh, something else that Devin and a lot of people do also, say if you want to have this a three-second ramp, so you put 45 here. And this saves on CO2, so I see the merit. I see why they do it. Um, so you come in here and um, fill row values. So now it goes from 60 to 45 at three seconds. And then say out here, you know, the run is over. So you go, okay, six seconds. You put six here, and that kind of bunches it all up. Oh, no, that doesn't bunch it all up like that. <laughs> oh, 99, that is not right. Okay, 4.5, 4. hold on. See, that, that is the other thing that scared me with EFI is I was like, I fat finger it, and then I screw it all up. And that happens from time, time, time to time. So you kind of got to pay attention to what you're doing. So put a number, put a six right there, and it does bunch it up, but not as bad as it did a minute ago. So then if you put that last spot at a zero, now you're, what happens is it goes to 4.5 seconds. And then at six, well, no, you'd have to, that right there would need to be um, 5.9. See, I don't know, I don't do it like this. But at, um, basically what would happen, if you left it the way it was, it would gradually decrease boost throughout the run. But now what would happen is it takes off, it goes to 45 PSI, and it stays there until 5.9 seconds. And then at 6 seconds, it drops all the boost off. And that's if you don't have the TPS modulation enabled. If you've got TPS modulation enabled um, from right here, then it doesn't ever apply CO2 until you get past 50% throttle. So it kind of depends on what you're doing. Let me see if I answered Rodney's question. I don't know. There's a couple. I don't know if they were part of what you were. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to exit out of this. And do you want to save? No, I do not want to save. Because that's how you that's how you screw it all up is when you um, you hit, I want to, uh, do you want to save? Um. Uh, Okay, I think that was a side conversation. Okay, so let's let's see. So Rodney, let me make sure you set up time on a boost. I assume you're a couple seconds past. So Rodney, hopefully that that solved. Um, hopefully that was detailed enough on on how the the boost curve works. I'm trying to get six seconds past your room, save time, and dump after time. Yeah. So whatever the last number is is what it's going to do for the entirety of indefinitely as long as the ignition is on is essentially what it is. Um, Oh, yeah, Rodney. <laughs> did you see how many flip coins I gave away? No. I'm sorry. I gave away a couple. Actually, I gave I away. Did. I did. I gave away. <laughs> one of them was Randy's. One of them was mine. So the people I'd flip, I'd flip for them, they're like, oh, that's a cool coin. If I wanted to flip, if I win to flip, can I keep the coin? And my dumb butt said, yeah. And, said, <laughs> and, and I lost twice. I lost the coin flip twice. You gave Randy's coin away. I, I gave Randy's coin away, too. We got to give her. Well, I, I had already given mine away, and I didn't have one. We'll get you one new one, Randy. Thank you. And, thank you. But then Randy did sell one. He made money. He sold it for twenty dollars. Well, I gotta <laughs> buy one. I gotta get another one. <laughs> you gave his away. No, now he, he's gonna no, go he, beg on the street. No, he had two. <laughs> he had two. I don't even know how he got two. <laughs> Randy had two, and then and then he sold yeah, one for twenty dollars. I couldn't find my uh, the first one, so I bought one. <laughs> and he made, and made, I, I made Kelly. I made Chris, Kelly take the money. So Chris has gotta go. Oh, Christy's leaving later. Later, Christy. He didn't give me that money. That that is funny though. Randy, Randy made five dollars. Hey, I'm gonna charge you a, a seller's fee, Randy. I need a, I need a. Um, ten, you gonna give me a ten ninety nine? I need, yeah, I need twenty percent of that. <laughs> driving with miles, that's question. What is um, driving with miles? Uh, he had a question. What is the um, what is the key for no prep? Um, car said it was six. From what I have seen, you got to drive off the starting line, and so you've got to easily you got to take off and then apply the power. And, um, you know, the the no prep stuff is difficult. And, uh, you know, we're still learning. I mean, it's almost like old school stuff with suspension. You got to have everything. It's got to move. You know, you got to be able for the for the front to come up. The back's got to got to squat a little bit or either come up a little bit. But the, the, the dead, like the radial stuff where nothing hardly moves, you get a little bit of rake in the back, that, that is not going to work. So the front's got to come up. Um, power management is key. I'm still learning that power management, you know, taking off, uh, what? I'm leaving. <laughs> Do what? What? <laughs> it is crazy. I mean, and when, when I tell people what I'm leaving on, it's a, it's a shock. And a lot of it might be the, the converter is so tight. 
but we're leaving generally between 32 and 3600 rpm between a half a pound of boost and, and two pounds of boost and so we're barely i mean it just drives off you know and that's that's something we're going to try to get more aggressive at i'm hoping the new converter is going to be able to to get it so that it will it will really take some power early is my game game plan i mean we'll see let's we'll see if it works out um let's see let's see let's see wolf said i need my own talk show apparently i talk too much <laughs> i know randy and uh everybody's hardly gotten a word in tonight all right brandon what you got so did you get the converter they you still have, are you getting a deal on or what are you getting yeah i mean they're 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 sponsoring some of it um i mean they're just giving me a break on it i mean I'm, i can't afford it to buy it 100 outright so they're they're giving me a little bit of a deal on it is it ball together or is it, um, do what is it a ball together or is it they yeah, got it, it is a bolt together and um you know so luckily i mean they're not giving i mean they're not fully sponsoring my ride i mean that would be freaking awesome if i could get some full ride sponsors then I'd have a super nice car and I'd probably wreck it the next day. <laughs> so we, we can't do that too. No, no. Um, so, but yeah, so it, I mean, it's a really nice converter. And uh, honestly, the, the Eric Mann's reached out to me and I, I hadn't, I mean, I've heard people using Hughes and I've heard of, and, but then when I started doing some research on it, you know, I mean, Kendall's got one, Beater Bomb's got one, uh, Bob, uh, Bobby Parks has got one, it looks like. Um, he don't share a ton of information, but I'm pretty sure he does. Uh, you know, the Beater Bomb, uh, Kendall, I already said them, Billy the Kid. There's a lot of people that, that are using them, and so apparently they got some some, some no prep clout. How so, many statters uh, are you getting? Do what? You're getting one statter or a few? No, just one. I mean, one. the statters are $500 a piece. Oh. <laughs> um, so, you know, depending on – I'm going to keep my PTC – I reached out to Dusty at PTC on Monday, and um, you know he was like, you know, four weeks to get get another converter uh, if you if, if build one outright, and he said they can do a stator change on it in two weeks. But I hate that PTC is being so good. I hate to, I hate to mess with it, you know, because I want to keep it. And I'm like, if I send it off, I know it's just a stator change, but I've also known stuff you just do a stator change and then it don't work right. I think I get the kid in bed. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Yeah, so 11 o'clock. He's at school. Yeah. But, um, so uh, I didn't want to really mess with it. I wanted to buy another one. And, you know, I won that $2,200. And I was like, okay, well, now is a perfect time to, you know, to, to spend some money in the program, especially having that conversation with Clint on Sunday morning. You know, I was like, okay, well, I mean, I got to, I got, we got to step it up. So converter is, we got a decent motor. We got a decent transmission. We got a badass turbo. Uh, so we're not lacking power management. Um, you know, with the Holly. So what connects the power of the motor, you know, to the transmission, to the to the tire? That's the torque converter. And, you know, Randy, you know, he went through ultimate converter concepts. He had Lenny do some converter stuff for his, uh, for his lower combination. And we saw big changes when we were making changes. And so I've had that. How long have I had that PTC converter? I bought that thing used. I've had it probably five years. And I haven't done anything to it. It's been hassle-free. And, um, you know, it's a 16 stator. And so, you know, and that's why, I, you know, I reached out. Okay, well, I didn't want to wait four weeks for a new one. And I didn't want to mess with that one. And that's why I, when I reached out, you know, on, on Facebook, I was like, I'm looking for a converter. And then, I mean, you know, we're going to try to Hughes. And, I mean, Hughes is always, I mean, they're a huge name brand. They've been in business for 50 years. And, you know, it's one of those things I, I'm looking forward to trying something. Uh, it's like somebody said, my you know, my shops, when I, when I put those, bad to the bone uh qa1 mod shots on the back you know I'm, it's like like you got a, a million dollar home in a trailer park you know and that's what it does what it looks like and so now i'm gonna have a torque converter the same way you know i'm gonna have a torque converter that is a you know a, a out, outside the league of the car but i think that's what a lot of these guys are doing man i think i think honestly these cats that are going so fast uh they're just ahead of the curve and so, you know, and I heard Bobby, he was on um, Billy the Kid. They did a channel last uh, show. It was last night or the night before that. They done a um, a show and they were, they were uh, he was on there talking. And that's what he believes too, that they're just ahead of the curve. They've gotten uh, faster, quicker than anybody else. So, you know, at some point they, these other cats are going to show up. So How's the oil pressure doing? Uh, it's maintaining. I mean, it's fine right now. I mean, when you look at the data log, it's about 60. So, I mean, the, I mean, we got good, stable oil pressure. 
so uh, it's not super high. Uh, Randy's wants to be about 100 PSI. I just, I mean, my motor won't, won't make that. It's internal. Um, you know, uh, it, 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 it is what it is. Randy, what you got? Uh, on, I you got we'll off here. I got a big storm going on out here. Oh, is it storming there? Yes, it's getting, getting down pretty good right now. Oh, man. Well, that's not good. So, but, uh, man, I sure enjoyed this weekend. You oh, did gosh. really good, man. Yeah. It was a lot of fun doing those rounds. and Yeah. It was fun, cool man. Stuff. I appreciate y'all coming out. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, okay. it's always fun and exciting. Um, drag racing is just fun, man. It's a it's a team sport. It's a team effort. Um, you know, people go out there and do it by themselves all the time, but it's not near as fun when you don't have people hanging out with you and helping you and, BS and in the in the pits. That's all part of the fun, you know. Um, mm -hmm. It's a whole it's a whole experience. Hopefully, you know, it's one of those things that that everybody um, get to. I mean, obviously, most of the people here now they that's what they're doing. They're drag racing. So I mean, it's it's fun. It's exciting. So have you ever thought about I'll, I'll hit you up? Um, I'll hit you up probably tomorrow. I'm more, I okay. might ride out to Galat tomorrow night and just uh, see who's out there and. Um, okay. Maybe maybe try to catch uh, some some footage. I ain't gonna be racing this weekend. I don't know what I'm gonna be nice. doing. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be. All right, I'll talk to y'all later. Later, man. See ya. See ya. Thank you. You ever thought about trying the radios on the NoPro app, or you stay away from that? Nah, I don't know how the I don't know how those guys are um, are doing it. There's um, a guy in Texas is doing really good with them. The, there was a couple of people down there on radials this weekend, but I don't think they, um, I don't think they were, um, I don't think they were able quite to, to go as fast. Emma was on radials, wasn't he? Happy. Um, yeah, they, they he was on, he was on radials. Hey Joe, um, I just saw you sent me a message too. I'm sending you the link to the live. Uh, Joe, uh, he's in Alaska, so he's probably just getting off work. Uh, he's got a Camaro that he's doing, so he's he's. Uh, we'll see if he hops on real fast. I just sent him the link so he could jump on. Um, let's see. I'm trying to look through some of these. Rodney said, "I need a drive shaft sensor before you uh, go change the converters." Yeah, um, it's it's just Rodney. The the let me show you. I'm gonna show you the data log. Let me show you. Let me hold on a second. Let me show y'all the data log of what I'm struggling with. CRC Auto Body says Galat's canceled tomorrow night. Somebody said Galat's already canceled. Yeah, CRC Auto uh, and Mar or Auto Marine or where'd they go? I wonder why they canceled. Is there bad weather coming through tonight? Tomorrow's supposed to be nice. That's that guy I was talking about, the streetcar Joe, the the one from Texas. I got you. I, you yeah, watch I, the channel sometime. I hadn't looked. Um, let's see here. Uh, trying to find where is it an appropriate. So this is from last year. We'll just show. Let's see what this one looks like. Uh, I pedaled it on that one, so that's not a really good one. I'm just looking at data logs. I can't, um, I just can't, if I pull up my screen right now, y'all see all my ETs and everything. And I share that, honestly, I share that a lot with this, anybody that's on our normal member stuff. I mean, normally they see this stuff. Um, but I mean, we don't have a ton of members. I think we got about 80 members now. So if y'all want to, if y'all want to um, join, it's only $5 a month and we get to hang out every Wednesday night. And we've been doing it since May. It's fun, man. This is, who doesn't like spending time with drag racing, right? It's true. Um, let's it's see. Old. Okay, there's a there's a lot of Randy's runs on here. Okay, so Rodney, I'm gonna show you what I'm fighting with. Okay, this this is an old run, so this is not this is not that big a deal. So I can show y'all this one. Okay, let me um, pull back up my screen real fast. I don't think I will have um, any of my competitors griping and moaning that I shared too much information. Okay, let's see. Old Squirrel Tuned, he said that I will love the Hughes. Awesome. He's got a good channel too, guys. Make sure y'all go jump on, on his stuff too. He is constantly giving good information. He's got good videos as well. Um, super knowledgeable um, dude. 
Let's see. Hey, Frank, the owner of Rockingham is greedy. Um, well, I mean, I understand this. He's, he's got a business, um, you know, but I was not. I, I, never mind. I ain't even going to talk about that anymore. <laughs> it's over and done with. I have said what I was going to say. Right. Yeah, I'm done with that. Um, okay, hold on a second. Let me go. Um, okay, share screen. Where's it at? Where's my share screen? You drag it out of the way somewhere. Kelly must have. Kelly must have. Um, oh, I, I think I ended it a minute ago. I didn't mean to end it. I think I ended it there. Okay, so now y'all can see my y'all can see my screen again, right? Yeah. Okay, so th Ronnie, this is what we're what I'm dealing with. So this is that log from last year at Coastal Plains. Um, it was a it was a I, well, I don't think it was a no prep. Red line is my RPM. So this is something that uh, we call this the rolling two step. And this PTC converter, it just gets up super fast. And you see, I mean, it just comes up quick to the, now everything else has got to work right too. I got a fast spool and turbo. Um, you know, I've got a, a the, the, the stator combination and this thing, you know, comes up fast. Um, the hardest thing on a turbo car is getting this thing to get over the hump. So that hump right there is a uh, 30, usually it's between 3,200 and 3,600 RPM. Once you can get above that, usually you can get it to go ahead and go and make boost. But this rolling two-step up here, um, that red line, see, we put more uh, RPM until it gets to a set amount of boost. And then once it gets to a set amount of boost, then it drops the RPM back down. And uh, like I could, that's what I'm doing my burnout now with, uh, like when we're doing no prep, because I'm leaving it at 3,200 to 3,600 RPM. It won't even do a burnout right there. It'll just try to take off. <laughs> so I have to turn the scramble button on and I link it to this rolling two step. So it gets up to 4,4200 to do the burnout. It's crazy. And then I have to make sure I remember to turn it off. But this area right here is what I'm struggling with, Rodney, on the uh, on the on the on the on the converter. So the slip out the back is good. The converter tighten is no problem up here. But PTC, what they do is they make theirs so, so that they spool up super fast and then they 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 just tug on the motor real hard to accelerate the car. And, you know, a lot of converters, when you take off, they it's a gradual linear curve, you know, if it locks up real tight. But I'm a firm believer in flashing and slip early. If you don't have flash and slip early, essentially you don't have any torque multiplication. And so that's exactly what you want is you want the torque converter to not be dead locked up. You want it to multiply torque, torque converter. And so torque multiplier is what happens. And so, um, you know, we take off, I mean, like this run here, uh, 40, looks like the leave was 4,300 RPM. So right there. And if the good thing about the Holly here, you can set it up here too. You can see exactly when you let go to trans break, let go to trans break there at um, 0.6 seconds into the run. It's at 6,200. And so that's the flash. That's the stall speed of the converter, essentially the flash speed. And then it lugs it out to 1.3 seconds. So we're done and gone through the 60 foot here. And the motor hadn't even accelerated. But the car has been accelerating, but the motor is not. Um, so this right here, and then the motor starts accelerating, of course, and it gets up there at 7,400. And I short shift it. Uh, this motor, my motor is happy shifting at 7,800 to 8,200. It falls back to 6,800. Uh, a lot of times on big boosts, uh, this thing will it'll 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 roll the converter up there on the shift of like seventy three hundred. Um, depends on the transmission temperature too. But then of course it, it got out there. Green line up there is TPS, so I lifted at three point four. It was kind of going all over the place. This was before I had my good shocks on it, and then I got back on it and pedaled it a little bit. And then and you can see down here I had the TPS modulation on, and you see this blue um, the blue line. And the um, the the that one right there, that's target boost. And if we go through here and we look, when I lifted, you see the target boost dropped, and then the the boost pressure actually dropped too. But then it comes back up some, depending on what your your full throttle is. So right there, I'm at 72% TPS, and normally right here in that curve, I mean, it had uh, target was target on pressure was 45.5. And see how it brought it back up some. If if this would if TPS modulation would not have been on, it would have been at least forty five. That's probably a fifty psi ramp, honestly. Um, what I had on the on the target, but I mean, so it was down here. It allowed you to kind of throttle the car a little bit, and then still run decent. You can see up there it run okay. I mean, it went a one eighteen sixty foot, 
five oh and 135 and letting off of it. And um, this is where you know what I what I do after a pass is this is like the note section. So you just put what the what you did. So I had 10.7 tire pressure, front struts. What that's how I do my extension. And then um, this was the you know the set the I mean that's that's just notes you can take. So you can put um, you know whatever you think is pertinent information. Track was garbage. I mean you could put temperature in there if you wanted to, which I never use that. But you, there's a lot of stuff you know you can put in here and actually you know utilize. Um, I usually just use the drag race function though here, but it tells you all your split splits. Uh, it just tells you everything to, to make it easier uh, to work on. But anyway, on this, on my, um, that's what I'm struggling with right now, Rodney, is the, the convert, this little, um, this little, this little tug. Now, no prep. Now, of course, the more throw, more power you throw to this, the higher it goes and the harder it locks up. My no prep tune, it comes up to about 5,100, 5,200, and then starts tugging the motor. And this past weekend, what I had to do to make it so that it would, um, it would work and go through halfway decent because I was just having to short shift it. And so being able to short shift it was uh, what I was trying to do to make it work. And it was working in that last pass. I did not short shift it. Basically, I was just getting it. I was lugging the motor. So that, or I was, I was getting it in high gear one to one so that it would not lug. Um, so that's, that's what I was doing. Oh, there's Joe. What's up, Joe? Hey, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm just hanging in there. It's been snowing a lot lately here. Oh, man. You say you got some so, motor parts? So, yeah. So, let me flip my camera. So Joe, Joe is one of our regular members. He's always on here every week. So, we're trying to keep up with his builds also, what he's got going on. So, I got the motor in. Woo, doggy. And um and my turbos came in Monday. Nice. So, so I gotta do more fabricating, more cutting, because uh I wanna put my waste gates here, right? So but it's a little bit close to the radiator. So I'm gonna cut this <laughs> out all the way to here. Right. Try to get more room. And so I was thinking about building the front end on a one inch tubing. Right. Just uh one square tubing, you know, because that's what I have a that bender right there. I can uh, bend one inch square tubing, but I can't. I don't have a bender for the other stuff. For the round eye, so all right, dude, that looks good. That's yeah, good. the round eye stuff. That 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 looks really nice. So, so um, it's uh, I rattle canned it. I painted the engine compartment, so I'm gonna Ooh. finish cutting these all out here. So I'm gonna cut all this out, you know. And, uh, here's I got 44 millimeter. I'm gonna go out. Uh, I'm gonna come out. I bought some J bands, four inch J bands. I'm gonna come out the fender right here. Nice. Right, nice. right, right, right underneath the, and uh, then the wastegate's gonna come right out here probably, on both sides. Make it simple as possible. Dude, I like it. It's Let's <laughs> Less money, you know. So hopefully, end of May, I'll have it. It'll be running, you know. But I found out today I gotta go to, I gotta go uh, fix the airport at um, uh, Nelson Lagoon on the Ocean Chain hmm. oh, wow. uh, in Alaska. So wow. we're, that's where the deadliest catch catch fit. So. Here, here's uh, uh, what we got to deal with. You know, oh we're not racing right away. Dude, yeah, you got a little bit of time. <laughs> so. <laughs> hey, look. Last week, I got a little bit of time. Hey, last week the snow was above the uh, the tires that are stacked there, though. <laughs> so the snow yeah, is melting. But you look at my boat. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, Joe, somebody asked what, what headers are there. So, so those are Flotex. Flotex? Do those are uh, Flotex. So that kit. They come with a V-band and everything on them, you know? Um, but I that one I had to cut back. I'm going to have to cut it back to move the turbo back farther. Right. So 
But I haven't said hookers on Facebook Marketplace for sale. Some hooker Blackhawks headers. Oh yeah, those are so, the, those are nice headers too. I like the um. That's a nice little the, turbo kit though. Yeah. So um, I bought uh the Flotex and uh, these are uh sixty six seventy three VS racings. They gave me the best price with the best shipping. Right. You know. So. The shipping is rough for you up there in Alaska. Being in Alaska. Oh, oh sh shipping is, is a killer, you know. Like for my four nine inch, I had to pay four hundred fifty dollars just in shipping. Gosh. So, but when I when I when I can find someone that ships for free, I <laughs> try to use them. Like coast coast coastal race parts dot com. Those they ship my uh uh all star all star performance cage ten point cage for free. Oh wow! Cost me three hundred ten dollars. Can't beat so. that. So, but when I went to put the motor in, see that rack up there, right? Mm -hmm. I put that's all my wife's Christmas stuff for Christmas. <laughs> so I went to put the motor in. I had to push the car back so the back tires at the end of the um, garage, right? And so I jacked it up, got it on jack stands, got the motor up, lifted, and then the, the cherry picker hit 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 up here, and the motor wasn't high enough to go in yet. So I had to jack the car back down, get the motor in the engine bay, I then jack it back up. And there and I was, I was, and there is nothing. And worse. I was cussing. Okay. Look, there is nothing worse than working was, out of like a, a carport uh, or a car, a garage like that. And that's what I have, and that's what I'm, I'm about to have to bring the car back over here so I can work on it some more. Um, it's getting neglected from its like daily duties. I mean, the cars need work all the time. And but I, I was same scenario. I had to change the motor though. I pushed that, but mine I pushed it out, and instead of hitting anything up top though, it started pouring down rain. And so <laughs> everything got soaked in the garage. Oh my god, it was so. But I mean, the garage, the garage it was out. so. <laughs> it was thirty degrees outside when I uh, put the motor in. You said three. It was. It warmed up to thirty degree. Oh, thirty 30. degrees. Oh my god. Yeah, you guys, yeah, so. man, that's that is wrong. So, but um, that's the old motor. There. So, um, is it better to run? That is the old motor, yes. Right. That the cam bearing. It was a five three that the cam bearings came out right. of it. So, okay. and I have a spare over there. You know, you never know when you need a spare motor. No, I have right a spare there. over there. This is exactly so, right. that's what you gotta have. I gotta get so. What were you fixing so, ass? Is it best to what? So, um, so is it best to run two blow off valves? Uh, it depends for for the volume of air that yours is going to be moving. What size blow off valve did you get, or did you get one yet? I got, I got two, uh, fifty millimeters. They sent me two. Oh, they sent you two. They were only supposed to send. They sent me two. Should I use them or not? I would. Yes, if you've got two. Me, if if you've got two and they're going to uh, let you keep it, or if you got it at a deal, do not send it back. Absolutely, um, I've got two sixty millimeter yeah. blow off valves on mine, and um, you know it's one of those things. It kind of depends on the volume of air that the turbos are moving. Uh -huh. The more that it can vent, the 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 less likely you are to to blow a turbo up. Um, and that's what happens is if the blow off okay. valve cannot vent quick enough. Then what will happen is it'll uh, it'll just it, it'll it'll surge the turbos. So I would definitely put both of them on it. So yeah, so I'm gonna yeah. So I just talked to Boosted Lucille and uh, asked him tonight where he ran his oil drains. And right. He told me timing cover. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna. I watch his channel a lot too, and, and Squirrel Tunes channel, and uh, th there's a lot of information on both of them. Yeah. So that's awesome, man. how to do my fuel system is, is I, I'm I'm copying from a Lucy Lucille. <laughs> right. So. Dude, so and 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 that's awesome. like if there's if there's any new members here, you know that guys that aren't, aren't members, you know we learn a lot. And 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 John's really knowledgeable, and there's and there's a lot of guys on this channel that uh, 
on on Wednesday nights, you know, uh, that have knowledge. And if John doesn't know, they can they can help you out. It's really fun, so. man. I, I really I really enjoy it. It's it's a good time. Well, Joe, you're yeah, just coming. Sometimes I'm eating dinner when you guys start. <laughs> I know, right? That's why you're so far so far behind us in time. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, well, cool deal, Joe. Well, that thing's coming along, man. I appreciate you uh, hopping on and showing us. Um, you know, get the other valve on it, and then you'll be set. Yeah. All right, ten four. All right, guys. Let me see if I can catch up on some other questions down here too. Um, let's see which we're, we've been, and that's the time flies, man. We do, we do this. We've been doing this every Wednesday night for, um, gosh, it's, I mean, we started it in May. So, I mean, coming up on a year, 10 months and, uh, this is always fun. Wednesday nights, we've been really consistent, usually between nine and nine thirty. Nine thirty is, uh, about the best time that we, we normally do it. It gives me time to get all my junk together that I'm trying to do on the race car or whatever I'm trying to do. And, um, you know, and then we can get on here and have a good time. It's fun. Talk about racing. Midweek racing. Uh, talk about what we did last weekend and what our plan is for this week. But so, yeah, it's a, it's a good time. Uh, let's see here. Um, hopefully, Rodney, did I get your questions answered good enough on that boost curve stuff? Um, a lot of times I get kind of uh, long-winded, too. I mean, clearly, I mean, <laughs> apparently I like to talk. It's all good. Uh, the heads on mine are uh, Pro Top Line. I'm not sorry, not Pro Top Line. Profiler, uh, two tens is on mine, and it depends on where we're at. Like the no prep stuff. I mean, we're running 20, 26, 27 pounds of boost uh, at the top of the track, and then on like fully prep stuff. I mean, we're uh, you know we'll run 40, 45 pounds of boost, but it's kind of hard on on parts. Trey hopping on, what's up? All right, let's see here. But, yeah, so we're – um, I'll boost a little seal. He hopped off. Um, like I said, y'all go to check his channel out, like Joe said. Um, he does budget racing with a Camaro as well. And, um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of people willing to share information and, you know, have fun. I mean, it's all about the fun. It's all about having fun racing. And, you know, it is – it's unbelievable the, the people, you know, in the sport of drag racing. I mean, everybody just, you know, for the most part, it's – you know, people are just out there having fun and, you know, it's just, it's fun. It's good times. People willing to help everybody out. You know, most, anytime you go to the track, if you need something, somebody's going to help you. And that is, uh, you know, that's what it's all about. Helping, helping your competitors when they need it. Uh, you know, when, when, when you can, if you got it and, you know, helping them go faster. Cause the goal is you don't want to outrun somebody that is, uh, slower than you or, or broke. You hate to get wins, you know, when they can't make it to the starting line, you know, so it's just one of those things. Uh, but yeah, so we'll, like I said, this weekend, I do have um, a video I'm working on editing now. Um, another channel um, I would like y'all to go, go check out Hustling Horsepower. Uh, Nick, he's got the, um, he had the Dirty 30 that crashed it last year. He come back out to Rockingham. So I've got some, I got some good footage and an interview with him. Uh, so hoping I'll have that video edited um, I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping I'll have it out probably. It'll probably be Friday by the time I actually get it edited and released. So, um, we'll see. We'll probably be stopping by Summit. I need to pick up a CO2, um, <laughs> shifter. <laughs> so I'm going to stop by Summit. We have to go right by Summit Racing, uh, when we're going to visit Kelly's parents. So we're going to definitely go, uh, do that. You going bargain bin shopping? Yeah. Oh, I absolutely. <laughs> that is like, dude. The, the 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 clearance or um, return section at Summit, it seems like I always find something good over there. I mean, like always. So it is freaking crazy. Yeah, you're you're right. Um, Squirrel Tune, most fun for me is helping other people. Um, you know, getting it. Uh, you know, dude, I have when we're out there with Randy's car, and you know, it's completely different. You know, being in the driver's seat and being tuner. And just being tuner on a car like his, the caliber of his car, and seeing it click off, he let go of the button and it snap him back in the seat, and he come back when you get down there, and you know that big green. You're absolutely right. It is amazing the feeling that you know they have. Um, you know you're able to help them accomplish what they're trying to accomplish, 
Uh, dude, it's, it's crazy, crazy. I love it too. It's, that, that is super fun. That is super fun being able to do that. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see. There's another question there. Um, so Lance had a question. What's your opinion on adding weight to the rear end versus the car? So sprung weight versus unsprung weight. Um, we have been using a combination of both. Um, at one point I had no weight in the car. I had 200 pounds on the rear end and the rear end like wouldn't move as fast. Um, and then, then I went to like a 50, 50, uh, last race I had, uh, no weight on the rear end and all the weight was in the trunk and the parachute mount. Um, I think, I think it's just something I'm still testing, uh, is I, I don't have the ability to make uh, most of these races are off the trailer. And that's what I'm struggling with is when you go off the trailer, you just don't have the ability to, to test a bunch of stuff. And, um, that's where the people that are shining the most now are the ones that are racing a lot on crappy surfaces. So uh, we got to do better at finding a test spot where I don't have to worry about getting arrested and losing my car. Um, that's the biggest thing. But so it's, I'm still learning. I don't know. But, I mean, maybe it's a combination of both. If you look at Kendall's car, his car has a lot of weight on the rear end. I mean, a lot of weight on the rear end. Um, you know, some of the other cars patches, and then they've got some weight on the rear end, but not a ton. So I mean I don't um, I don't know what the, the the true answer is and it probably is going to vary from car to car. Um, so somebody uh, Tracy said would a nitrous combo be better for no prep racing? Um, nitrous cars are sixty foot and it seems like like crazy. I'm getting out going to the sixty foot like crazy by nitrous cars generally. Turbo cars generally sometimes do it too, but um, the nitrous cars really are. Um, so nitrous is there's a lot of nitrous racers out there. And then, you know, it really, they're, they're fast. So, I mean, you know, nitrous is definitely a, a, a good way to go for the no prep stuff. Um, now you got to have some steam on the big end. Cause that's where also um, we race CB Gilbert with the, um, in the, in round, uh, when we were down to the quarterfinals. Wow. Yeah. And we, yeah, when we were uh, at eight cars, and he's a nitrous uh, 5.3 and he jumped out on me. He actually had me about a half a car. And then, um, you know, I was able to grab the scramble and come around him. So he's, he's putting another kid on for the next race. <laughs> I'm going to have another kid on it for, for the next one. So, um, you know, but nitrous is not bad, but you got to – that's where I think the nitrous cars are struggling is they don't have the power of, of the turbo combinations out back. Let's see. Um, that was the other question. Uh, I am seriously thinking about moving my exhaust back to the fender um, or possibly, um, you know, going somewhere. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, the amount of condensation that methanol creates with it, it's just, it's, I mean, it's like a waterfall. You know, when you first crank the car up and warm it up, and that's why we always have to clear it out in the pits. And it's like, whoosh, I mean, it's just, it's crazy, you know, rust water everywhere. And what's happening is it just can't get out. So it's creating the condensation and it just can't come out. And so it just gets all in the turbine housing. And then when you finally, when you whack it, then it just comes up like crazy. And that even happens if I let it, um, if I let it get too cold in between rounds, if we, if it gets really cold um, and cools off, or if we get stalled out, um, you know, with a couple hours in between rounds, it'll even do it on the starting line sometimes. And that, you know, that's a freaking mess when you're on the starting line. You rev it up and then it, you know, dumps a ton of water everywhere. Luckily, it's not methanol. It's usually just, it's just water. So it's condensation. But it's, um, you know, it's not a good look when you sat and wet everybody down with water. <laughs> and rusty, rusty, stinky water at that. Backs them up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Um, let's see. All right, cool deal. Um, well, guys, I appreciate y'all jumping on. Um, we had a lot of people on. This was awesome. We don't do the lives a ton on Wednesday night, but, you know, occasionally every few months we'll try to do one. We don't get to talk about as much tech stuff as we normally talk about when we do it like this, but usually um, it's the same similar format. We're just talking, having fun, and, you know, people that have any questions or, you know, about my combination or if I have any ideas for their stuff, I like to try to, um, you know, give them, them my ideas and my thoughts. Um, and like somebody else said earlier, if I don't know, um, I thought it was Joe. If I don't, if I don't know, then a lot of times, you know, they can, they, there's somebody on here that's got some experience and might be able to, to help out. 
All right, guys. Well, I appreciate y'all jumping on. Joe is looking good. So, um, hey, John, I got one more question. So, okay. on your video, I seen you warming up your transmission. Is there a reason for that? Yeah. So, we pushed the car up to the line. And so, what we want to do is, um, you know, you got that gear all in the back and you got the transmission fluid. And when it's cold, it, it definitely is, it makes the converter tighter. It makes it just so it doesn't lubricate as well in the transmission and the rear end. So what I try to do is jack it up. And, um, you know, that's why, I mean, if, you can, if you're if you warming it up, if you're driving it to the staging lanes, then that'll get the, the transmission warm and the rear end warm. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they're just driving around the pits a little bit. But since we push it to the line, we usually just try to jack it up, get it so that we can warm it up, get it nice and warm on the motor, on the heads and the transmission fluid. And it's super critical what I'm finding on the in the no prep world that that transmission temperature it really affects how the converter grabs. If the train if the transmission is really cold, the converter is a lot tighter. It's a lot harder hit. So getting it up to temperature that's the reason I do that. Okay. All right. Well, cool. So it looks like we got a new member. Yeah, I see that. I, oh, yeah, look at that. Jesse Scott, I appreciate you joining, man. Awesome. Every Wednesday night we do this. Got us a new member. Awesome. But this is fun, guys. I appreciate y'all jumping on. And um, if y'all are racing this weekend, uh, you know, good luck. Be careful. Have fun. That's why it's about having fun. Uh, you know, and if you're not racing yet, like Joe, um it's still in the build process so have <laughs> have fun with the build because the build is part of the fun right so that's yep. like, um you know that's what we got to do all right guys well cool deal man well we'll see y'all later um like right. i said if y'all want to join if you're if you are not members you know uh just go to the membership channel section it's five dollars i think 4.99 a month and um you know and it uh i get like three dollars of that a month to, to help um, with my racing program. So I really appreciate it. And I'll try to share all the information um, I can on my open book with most of my stuff. And I, and honestly, probably uh, Joe, you can probably say I, I show a lot of information on these Wednesday nights um, that. Uh, yes, you do. I could not show tonight um, because uh, some, some racers might not be as happy. <laughs> I mean, uh, the reality, but when it's a smaller group of people, I can share I can share more ET and more mile per hour and more of what I actually um, was able to get accomplished. Uh, all right, guys, y'all take care. I appreciate it. Later. All right. Have a safe trip. All right. Thank you. We'll see Later. you all. Let's see. Oh, there. Okay, there goes my end button. Um, I appreciate y'all, y'all jumping on. Beater's Beater Bombs Butt Hurt Bar is awesome, awesome, awesome. I love it. Later, guys. <laughs>